Southwest brought to you by Southwest Airlines. With fares so low, you have the freedom to go places. By your participating Texas Chrysler, Plymouth, Dodge, and Jeep and Eagle dealers. By Columbia Healthcare Corporation. Healthcare has never worked like this before. By Texaco Clean System 3 Gasoline. Add more life to your car. NHL defenseman down in the IHL. If he plays that well, he's going to get recalled. Frank Kachera playing very well for the Arrows. Gets recalled by the Vancouver Canucks. In talking to Dave Tibbet, though, he said he plans on Dave Basijo still getting as much ice time. But look at Mike Hurlbutt and Darcy Waranka to get more ice time. But then the Arrows made a move today. They went down to Louisiana and grabbed a defenseman, Aaron Bow, who came to training camp, played very well for the Arrows but got a hernia near the end of training camp, so they sent him down for some conditioning. And down in Louisiana, he played very, very well. And the one stat that stands out in the Arrows management mind is that he was plus eight. A lot of people question his defensive prowess, but down in Louisiana, he was playing very well defensively. He gets the recall. Aaron Bow's numbers have been terrific. In fact, when you look at the Arrows numbers, they haven't been indicative of the kind of season they've had, except when you look at their numbers against the Orlando Solar Bears. Look at the numbers. 12 and 0, the Orlando Solar Bears are, but I think the one that really stands out are total goals 63 to 28 for Orlando and that power play is staggering 39.6 percent for Orlando the arrows just 7.8 percent on the power play and that's got to turn around Troy Gamble but it's not an easy task when you look at the Orlando Solar Bears they don't have Craig Fisher anymore but it doesn't matter they still have two of the three in Dave Barr and Mark Buffet well there are a couple killer bees these guys Dave Barr who missed the start of the season with a shoulder injury but looks like he's lost no form whatsoever and Buffet this guy can flat out play. Last year he was their MVP with 109 points, one of their best players by far. But Fisher's gone. 74 goals is gone. Who do they got? Kevin Smith. They replace him. What a replacement. This guy's jumped in the lineup. I think they're a better line without Craig Fisher and 74 goals. How can that be? This guy's just so good. Well, everybody thinks that the Orlando Solar Bears, especially with that line. And that takes us to the Gamble game plan, another addition of the GGP. And our, our first key always seems to be the one most talked about, hard work. Well, they have to work hard, especially against this Orlando team. By working hard, they have to take the man. But the problem with Orlando, when you take the and you have to contain them. If you contain them, then you can't jump back into the play. They're very good at jumping back into the play. The arrows are going to have to watch out for that. The penalty killing. In the last eight games, it's got a lot better. 89%. You cannot beat that. They're going to have to be prepared tonight. Dave Tippett wants them to be disciplined so they don't have to use that penalty killing that much. Forget about the past. The past is over and done with Dave Tippett was stressing that today. It's almost like the Green Bay Packers going into Dallas. They're beaten before they even get there. The arrows cannot be that way tonight. They have to win the first period. Some people think that Alan Bester has been the reason for the Orlando Solar Bears' success, but I think Scott Legrand, who will start in goal tonight, has been as much a successful factor for them. And of course, Frederick Shabbat will make another return in the pipes for the Arrows. When we return, it's the opening face-off. The Arrows and the Orlando Solar Bears from the summit will be right back. Houston Arrows Hockey on Fox Sports Southwest brought to you by Southwest Airlines. With fares so low, you have the freedom to go places. By your participating Texas Chrysler, Plymouth, Dodge, and Jeep and Eagle dealers. By Columbia Healthcare Corporation. Healthcare has never worked like this before. By Texaco Clean System 3 Gasoline. Add more life to your car, take it to the star. By Hilo Auto Supply. For the lowest prices every day, what you need is Hilo. By the Gatorade Company. You live life, you get thirsty. Life's a sport, drink it up. Welcome to the Summit. Adam Gordon, Troy Gamble, as we get set for action between the Arrows and the Orlando Solar Bears. And let us take a look at tonight's starting lineups. First for the Orlando Solar Bears. Up front, it's Bob Joyce, Joe Frederick, Trevor Sim with a defensive tandem of Jeff Buchanan and Pat Neaton. And in goal, making his first start this season against the Arrows, Scott Legrand. He's 3-1 overall, a 3.91 goals against average, 87% on the save percentage. Looking at tonight's starting lineups for the Houston Arrows, they will go up front with Mike Yo, Rob Valasevic, and... 
They will go defensively. Steve Jakes and Dave Basigio. Bill Bowler will start at center. And in goal, Frederick Shabbat. And Frederick Shabbat, who has had his ups and downs at home, but picked up the nice win Friday night against Kansas City, comes in 7-9-1 overall. A 3.25 goals against average. We are set to go. The Arrows trying to hand Kurt Fraser his first defeat against the boys in the white and the green. If that's not intense, I don't know what it is. And we're underway as the Solar Bears have it. They'll move it left to right in this period. Trevor Sim hands the puck back to Neaton. It slides out center ice. And it's shot into Arrow territory. Out of the net, Shabbat. Here's Mike Yo for Houston, moved it to the line. It's not out, loose in the circle, and it's swept away by Bowler. Jake's trying to fling it out of there. It's back to the line, and the arrows bust out with it. Bill Bowler handed over to Mike Yo, and he'll shoot the puck in. Along the boards, it came back. Here's a shot by Jake's right on. LeGrand makes the save as he lunges for it, and he will hold on to it. As we've had just over half a minute gone by in the first period, no score is Dave Tippett trying to turn things around and it was funny you know the arrows before the Kansas City game Friday everyone was talking about the struggles but all of a sudden you know you put that win in there and the arrows have won two out of their last three and and especially if they can win this home game tonight to finish off the home stand with three wins only one loss Dave Tippett would be very pleased with that and I had great conversation with Dave Tippett last night I had a chance to drive with him to San Antonio we scouted Orlando San Antonio last night with Orlando winning 6-3 but Dave Tippett had some great comments in the conversation off the draw here's Krumpke with a drive glove saved by LeGrand and he bats it in behind the cage Conroy loosens it up Conroy trying to roll it down but Chris Miller is there for the Solar Bears he'll fire at the length of the ice Hurlbutt goes back to play and this will be an icing call as Hurlbutt touches and the faceoff back down into the Orlando zone and we send it down ice side to Rob Dobson. Dauber, what do you think the keys are coming into tonight's game? Well, I think we can't be uh, too down about playing against this hockey club. You know, our record against them isn't all that great, but, you know, tonight's a different game. We're coming off a good win against Kansas City. It's important to us to be confident in our own end, take care of that first. I think in the games that we have lost to them, we really haven't taken care of our own end that well, and this is an important task for us. You know, with Frank Kachera gone, a lot of guys have to step to the plate and bring more into this hockey team and help us to become more confident. I think that's an important factor for this evening. Thanks, Dauber. Pot goes back down. Into the arrow and that's knocked down by Shabbat will be going down to Rob Dobson periodically tonight So look forward to his reports Here's Al Conroy a pass out at center ice knocked away Richards goes back to play and the Solar Bears clear to center but Conroy is there Now the arrows have got it Krupke slides to Hurlbutt Hurlbutt will shoot the puck ahead and Freer redirects into the Orlando zone Chris Miller goes back takes a hit from Shuchuk stays with a puck Here's Miller, he'll roll along the boards, held in by Krupke, slides it back down, Conroy's got it, he centered, shoot Chuck the drive, but it was deflected wide of the net. Freer centered the shot, stopped by LeGrand, and shoot Chuck had a marvelous chance in front. A terrific poke in front by shoot Chuck, but an equally dandy save by Scott LeGrand, and we will have our first penalty of the night coming up. It is a delayed penalty to the Arrows. Dave Byers scampers to the neutral zone, across the line, no, he had to regroup at center. Scott LeGrand to the bench, an extra attacker for the Solar Bears. Here's a puck controlled by Orlando. Pass to Mark Beaufay, he'll move it up. Beaufay across the line, shoots it in. Shabbat will hold on to it. And the Orlando Solar Bears will get the first power play of the night. And uh, I never saw the original penalty. Well, we're going to find out how good that penalty killing of the Arrows is going to be tonight. I think it was in that far corner to the left of LeGrand when Conroy got his stick up a little bit. Well, that's Al Conroy's in the penalty box. So he's going to get the two minutes. And Al Conroy being one of the best penalty killers on the Arrows squad won't have a chance to kill off this one as he's going to have to serve the two-minute minor penalty. Scott LeGrand playing very well, making a very good toe save. He kept his right foot in place. And when he kept that foot in place, Gary Shuchuk could not beat it you past the squall. Scott LeGrand. Penalty in the corner here as they say he got his stick up and a little bit there. And he'll go to the box. Orlando power play number one in the IHL at 23.2%. The arrow penalty killing 13th, but 
is the great Casey Casey would say up about five notches to number 13, and he is uh, uh, the power play, penalty kill, excuse me, of the Arrows. 41 out of the last 46 they've killed off in their last nine games. That's 89.1%. And in talking with Dave Tippett, he said that his penalty killing unit has been a lot more aggressive, so watch the Arrows penalty killers being aggressive all over the ice the way Dave Tippett did it when he played a few years back is very aggressive up ice. He believes that don't be passive up ice. Don't just let them come 200 feet. Be aggressive up ice. Sometimes you get turnovers and you can get scoring chances. Look for the arrows all night to be aggressive on their penalty killing unit. Face off right side of Frederick Shabbat. And Hurlbutt will control, fling it along the boards. Arrows trying to get it out of there, but it's held in by Sean Carter. Carter for the Solar Bears. Back to the line for Neaton. Buchanan sets up, lets the shot go. Shabbat the save, and the rebound trickled to the corner. Loosened up there by Hurlbutt. He'll move it along the boards. Can the Arrows get it out of there? No. Buchanan. Over to Neaton, his pass knocked away by Mark Lamb, and he will meander out at center and quickly shoot it down the ice. The power right, plays down to guys, a buck 18. Two and a half, well, actually three minutes played in the first period, no score. And the Solar Bears are going to shoot the puck all night from the point on their power play. Buchanan will shoot it in to the arrow end. Krupke hammered it, and it will bounce up to Bowler, but he can't clear the zone. Carter held at the left point. University of Wisconsin grad laid it along the boards, held in at the point by Ferner. It's loose and Carter, slides it along the ice. Krupke trying to move it along, he can't. Here's Brian Felsner, he'll loop it down. It came out in front, and it's jumped on by Todd Richards for Orlando, hammered by Valasevic. Puck came down low, Felsner rolls it to Carter, back to the line, Ferner tees it up. Rolled it over to Richards. Arrows working the perimeter pretty well here. The shot deflected wide. Felsner trying to grab it in behind the net. Solar Bears turn it back to the line. Here's Richards. A pass down along the left side for Zach Boyer. The pass hit Ferner. Here's a step shot. They score! A power play goal as it was stuffed in by Brian Felsner. And the Solar Bears take a 1-0 lead. And when you talk about fluky goals, this is going to be one of the all-time fluky goals. Unbelievable. A broken stick ends up going behind the net, but the puck still goes off the back. Frederick Shabbat is down on the original shot. Felsner tucks it in the short side on the empty net. Mark Ferner had the original one-timer, but his stick snapped. Frederick Shabbat going down on the original shot cannot recover in time to take Felsner on the short side. And a one nothing lead for the Solar Bears. Another power play goal, which is how they've really gotten it done this year. That is their 24th power play goal this season. That is far and away the most totals in the IHL. Arrows come right back. Mark Gregg trying to center. Gregg in the right circle. Looped it down for Freer. Freer sends it along for Gregg. He's shouldered by Dreger. Mark Gregg along the boards. Trying to work it down, that's taken away by Dreger. Kick back down by Greg, and Freer's got it. Mark Freer along the boards, kind of by Ferner. Roll along the near side, and Joe Reynolds will clear it out at center, and the arrows are back. Darcy Rowenka sweeps along the boards. Freer will move it up. Mark Freer, rink wide pass for Greg. Hits the line, shoots, and that hit the post. And that will tear him up over the glass and out of play. Timeout on the ice, four and a half. Played in the first, and the Solar Bears with the one nothing lead. Brian Felsner's fifth goal of the year has given the Solar Bears a 1-0 lead, and Kurt Fraser using this timeout to talk to his troops. Kurt Fraser very happy about that goal, but the other day was not too happy, Adam. They had played in Quebec, and we've all heard about how tough it is to travel from Quebec. They played in San Antonio. The only problem was is their equipment went to New York and back to Montreal. They had no equipment. Their equipment did not arrive until game day at 3 o'clock. Their equipment was absolutely soaked. Really didn't matter. They came out and had a 2 nothing lead in San Antonio. And that was the kind of day that it went for Orlando, even though they won the game 6-3. It was a very physical contest. I think the Arrows can look to maybe build upon that, and we'll see if that's a factor when you get later in the second and third periods tonight. Arrows trail 1 to nothing right now. Conroy in his own zone for Houston, trying to move it up the boards. And it's taken back by Hurlbut. Shot up to Conroy. And here comes Gary Shuchuk for Houston to center ice. Give it to Freer across the line. Dump the puck in. Chris Miller going back. He's blocked by Shuchuk. Freer puts the shoulder into him. Freer trying to dig it out in the corner. Skate to skate along the boards. Freer 
Looks along the wall, trying to toss it over to Shuchuk. Very Shuchuk, making boards. Cuts into the circle, right back to the line. Krupke gently rolled it back down, but Dave Barr, he overskated. Freer is there. Freer behind the net. He's knocked off the puck by Dave Barr. Nice play there by Barr. And a 16-year pro hockey veteran was cleared out at center ice. Mark Beaufay, the pass for Richards, in across. It came right back to Beaufay, shooting, and it was blocked. I don't know if that made it to Shabbat. And a big collision of players, and the arrows somehow come away with a puck. Freer out at center. He'll shoot the puck, bring the puck in, and that is offside. I thought he was going to shoot it. I think Conway thought he was going to shoot it, but instead he carried it, and the arrow's offside, and they'll bring the face off back to center ice. Whether you need to entertain clients, Ward employees, or you just want a few nights out with friends and family, the Arrows have a season ticket package for you. For more information, call 627-AERO, 627-ARO, Houston Arrows Hockey Sports. The way it ought to be. And lots of action in front of Frederick Shabbat. He stood very tall, though. He was out on the top of his crease. Ends up making a very good save on Buffet. by just standing up tall. But look at all the action in front of Frederick Shabbat. And the one thing Dave Tippett must be pleased with, the arrows have been very physical early going in the first five minutes of this contest. Face off will be brought out at center. Mark Lamb, Mark Craig, and Dave Morissette with Basigio and Steve Jakes. Puck is shot to center, knocked down by Morissette. Lamb trying to advance it. It's gobbled up by Felsner, but the arrows back to their own blue line. Basigio shot it into the Orlando zone. He goes back. Arrows into four. Check it's cleared out at center, and Basigio will have to scamper back. Six minutes gone, first period. The Solar Bears lead it on Brian Felsner's fifth of the year, a power play goal. One to nothing. Pass out at center misses everybody. This will be an icing call if Buchanan can get there. And Morissette's hustle just a split second late. And icing is the call. Dave Basigio playing very well for the Arrows this year. 14 games with the Arrows, has four goals, eight assists, 12 points. Very good stats. And he's among the IHL leaders in shots. He shoots the puck from the point very hard, but very smartly. 66 shots on, on net. Two assists in the two games against the Solar Bears. He's the only Arrow to have two points against the Solar Bears in the two games. Aaron Bull comes out for his first shift of the night. And you mentioned it in the pregame show that the Arrows were very happy with Aaron Bow and his offensive side of things. Uh, and, and they're hoping that maybe he can come up with a big game tonight in his first action uh, to help spell the absence of Frank Kuchera. Right now, the Solar Bears have the puck off the faceoff. Looped it back down low. Mike Yo is there. Yo cleared it up and out at center ice. Al May trying to advance it. He topped it through Ferner. May giving chase. Ferner tossed him to the corner. They're battling in there. Now it is Bowler trying to chip it out in front. But a good play by Bob Joyce to take it away. And it's out at center ice. I challenge you to find anybody that works uh, harder than Bob Joyce. He is one of those guys that the Orlando Solar Bears definitely count on, especially in the work factor. And Bob Joyce, I thought, especially in the game uh, in Orlando uh, back on November 8th, Bob Joyce uh, was one of their best forwards. Well, he's such a physical presence. And what he does, he uses his size and his strength to get in front and get very good position on defense around the IHL. Last night I saw him play and he duped it out last night with Brent Bilodeau and he's one of the rested Solar Bears. He ended up getting kicked out at the very start of the second period. So he's one of the few rested Solar Bears. If you're just joining us, Hubie McDonough hurt his hand in the game last night against San Antonio and is a scratch tonight. I don't know if it's broken, but we know it's hurt which was with his fight that he had with Grigori Panaleo. Puck is out at center ice. Joyce trying to advance it for Orlando. In there was May, battling in there. Loosened up by Yo, trying to bring the puck ahead, but it was taken back by Perry Dreger, and the Solar Bears regroup in their own end. A 1-0 Orlando lead, and it's Aaron Bow at his own blue line. The pass chipped ahead, but Ferner cleared it, and the Arrows will once again regroup with 12.40 to go in the first, trailing 1-0. Darcy Werwenka, lead pass for Freer, he's in alone, he waits, he shoots, stopped by Legrand. Oh, a terrific two-pad stacking save by Scott Legrand, robbing Mark Freer, and he keeps this thing. one nothing.
Darcy Warenka, one of the guys that Dave Tippett is counting on, makes a bullet pass here to Mark Freer. Aerial pass on Mark Freer's tape. The one problem here, the puck would not sit down flat for Mark Freer. He's trying to make a deke and then get it up over sprawled Scott Legrand. The puck would not sit flat for him. He could not get it up as high as he wished. And it remains 1-0 in favor of the Solar Bears. Here's Hurlbutt, lets a wrist shot go in again. His puck was bouncing. Now he lets one fly and a right pad save made by Scott Legrand. And uh, right there was another indication of the puck kind of bouncing around a little bit from Mike Hurlbutt. Couldn't get the wrist shot away the way he would have liked. And a lot of people don't realize that they freeze the pucks before the game, Adam. They get in, they put them in freezers because when they're cold, they seem to sit better on the ice. But tonight, the ice seems a little chippy, so the puck's rolling on Mike Curlbutt and Mark Freer. Last game, Mike Curlbutt with three points and a plus three. He's played really well since coming back from his ankle injury. And hopefully he can keep the point going tonight. But here's Orlando bringing the puck in. That's turned around by Hurlbutt, and the Arrows have got it. Hurlbutt scampers back behind the net, flushed out by Beaufet, and the Arrows will move out with it. Al Conroy out to center ice. Conroy launched to the head into the Orlando zone, and Miller goes back. Chris Miller sized up by Conroy. Puck is cleared up and out at center ice, and Hurlbutt will go back to play. Eight minutes gone in the first, and a 1-0 Solar Bear lead. It is Al Conroy in his own zone, lost the puck to Zach Boyer. It came back to the line. Miller hammered by Al May, and the arrows move out with it. Right to left they come, a pass for May. Trying to move it down the right side. Richards is there to take it away. Todd Richards hands it over to Beaufet in the corner. Al May giving chase, but Zach Boyer has it. And the Solar Bears are out at center. Evan Smith watched by Greg. The arrows turn it around. It is May. A pass ahead for Greg. He was bumped by Richards. It's cleared to center. And here comes Zach Boyer. Two on one as May gets back. Here's the shot. Stopped by Shabbat. Good work by Al May to get back and pick up that extra guy. And Shabbat makes the save. And it's back out at center ice. Nine minutes played. First period. One nothing. Our score. As the Solar Bears lead, they've got the puck in the arrow in. Buchanan centered one as we got another whistle and another penalty and we're gonna have a boarding minor to Al May, I believe. Al May being very physical in the corner, ends up getting two minutes. Very tough call to make, I believe. I just thought Al May was holding his ground, keeping the player away, being very physical as Dave Tippett has instructed the players that you don't want them to jump back into the play. So when you do get a chance to pinch the player, hold them there as long as you can. Al May getting two minutes and you got a call again on it, Adam. The penalty killing unit needs to do a job. They need to be aggressive. They need to every time get the puck all the way down the ice. Al May just being very strong on his skates. And well, that, I don't know. That looks questionable when we see it on replay. Very easy to call a game, though, Adam, when you get great replays like that. Face off in the arrow end. And it's controlled by Buchanan for Orlando. Tossed it over to Neaton. He'll slide it along the boards. Felsner let it go through. It came back. Buchanan looped it behind the cage. Loose puck. Can the arrows Jakes get there? He does. And here comes Freer to center. Mark Freer through the neutral zone. He'll dump the puck into the Orlando end. Legrand came out. He'll flip it away. And it's Sean Carter that's there for Orlando. He'll pass it to center for Brian Felsner. He'll rip it into arrow territory. It skipped through Shabbat. Boyer is hammered, but it came down take it right back it's Mark Freer he'll move it up the boards and shoot it the length of the ice power play down to a minute 20 and 10 17 to go in the first one nothing Orlando Buchanan last night with a goal and two assists was all over the ice and had a very big part of the physical presence of last night's game and Conroy takes his man to the boards with a hard hit that was Felsner that went in there and now it is Todd Richards shot it to Carter, and Carter pushed it back to the line. Ferner tees it up. It was deflected to Carter into the slot. Looks to let it go, and a glove save made by Shabbat. He will hold on. It looked like it was going wide from this angle, but 
Frederick Shabbat taking no chances. He will hold on with 52 seconds remaining in the Almay penalty. Carter ends up walking in. Frederick Shabbat pulling out the big glove. That is a very dangerous area. It was going to go a little bit wide, but the one good thing Frederick does is that he gets his glove on it to get the whistle so that the arrows can reset up once again. Carter having a great year. He's been likely the biggest rookie surprise in the IHL. He leads the rookies in scoring and assists with 17 assists. That time he wasn't going for the assists. He was going for the big goal. Face off left side of Frederick Shabbat. And the Solar Bears again win the draw. Ferner rolled it along the boards to Joyce. Bob Joyce cutting in, shot deflected by Hurl, but it came into Frederick, and his drive was deflected away. It'll go back down the ice. And giving Chase his shoot, Chuck, he brings it in shorthanded. Circles back to neutral ice, and back is Gord Klepke. Nine and a half to go in the first, one nothing Orlando. Half a minute to go in the Almay penalty as the arrow shoot it down the ice. And Gary Shuchuk, that last time the Solar Bears had the puck, took the point shot away. He does not want to give the Solar Bears all those point shots. They want to make them work it down low. Puck is picked up by Besiege Hill, and now Bowler giving Chase short at it. He's in with a shot, and it was stopped by Legrand. Picked up again by Yo, but he shot it right to Joe Frederick. He'll scamper down the right side. Key it up, the drive, stopped by Shabbat, and he will cover up and hold on with no time remaining to the Allen May penalty. And under nine minutes to go in the first period, it's the Solar Bears with a 1-0 lead. A 1-0 Orlando Solar Bear lead with under nine minutes to play in the first period. We send it down ice side to Rob Dobson. Your assessment of that last penalty kill. Well, that was a real important for us, Adam. One thing that we've said before the game and stress is that we can't just stay in a in a control box. We kind of put, have to put pressure on them. The last few games, when you look at the video, we gave them a lot of good chances. And that one we did. It was important for us not to get down 2-0 and we can get back now and get right in the hockey game. You know, there's no question, Dobber, that this team can play with the Solar Bears, is there? Well, I think if you look to the games especially that uh, have been so close is that it's been tough we've given up so had some mental lapses the last game down there we gave up three goals that really were just missed assignments and uh, if you take those away we're in every game it's just unfortunate we seem to get snake bit against them but uh, things will change tonight thanks Dauber big hit in the corner of shoot Chuck Roden Eaton in there and we're gonna get another whistle and I think this penalty will be on the Orlando Solar Bears and the arrows will now get their first chance on the power play tonight well, the arrows just killed off a very big penalty kill. Now Neaton going to the box. They get a chance to work their power play, which has struggled against the Solar Bears. You're going to look at the arrows trying to get a lot of shots. Neaton getting hit down. Once he gets back up here, though, he takes a little exception. Trips up Gary Shuchuk with his stick. Ends up getting either two minutes of tripping or interference. Our statistician, Neil Wilkins, pointing out the arrows have not scored a power play goal on the Orlando Solar Bears. And with that said, I would like to thank Thank uh, the Titleist people who have taken care of us, Neil and Mike Somerville, who sized you up with golf balls. Now, they're already gone. You had a case of golf balls. They're already gone first day, right? Well, all you have to do is go to Riverbend, Raveno, or uh, Lakeside, and you'll find them in the woods. They have gams written on them. They're easy to find. <laughs> yeah, return them. But we do want to thank uh, uh, Mike and the Titleist people. That was really nice of them. And, uh, See uh, see how long mine lasts. Not long, I'm sure. Here's Dave Barr across the line. Center one. That goes wide of the net. It's picked up by Freer. He'll move it up the boards. Can he clear it? Yes, he will. It's out at center ice. Brought in by Greg. Reaching for it was Drager. He'll clear it out at center ice. Solar Bears number one on the power play in the IHL. Well, that's what they are in the penalty kill as well. 91.6%. Buck is rolled back to the line. We'll wait. Tees it up. Let's the shot fly. And a glove save made by Legrand. And he'll hold on. Today in practice, Arrows were working on their power play. They're working on getting those good shots from the point. Darcy Warenka blasting a shot on Legrand, hoping for a little more traffic in front. It was just a little late coming. Legrand with a very good glove save. Any rebound in that situation, we have three arrows around the front of Legrand to knock in, hopefully, a loose puck. That's what the arrows are trying to work on. Now, when your power play struggles, you go back to the basics. The basics get the puck on net, work for rebounds. Face off will be in the circle to the left side of Scott Legrand. When they talk about goaltenders and rebounds, how much of that really is reading? I mean, goaltenders really don't have a lot of time to say, oh, I'm giving up a rebound. I've got to be able to direct it. It's a lot of anticipation there. He knew that he was going to be able to make his glove save on it. He had his glove in the proper position. You have to anticipate where the puck is going. 
Rock is shot along the boards. Tennyson trying to clear. It's back to center ice, and the arrows are there. Conroy fired it in. Chris Miller had it poked away. Here's Gill, but McGrand got over there and was able to stick it aside. 105 left on the power play, and the puck is cleared to center. Arrows trail one to nothing. Seven and a half to go in the first. Puck is to center for Conroy. His cross ice pass for Yo. He'll bring it across the line. Shoot the puck in. Hard rim along the boards, but it came to Frederick. Knocked down. Conroy fights for it, but Todd Richards redirects for Frederick. And here come the Solar Bears, short-handed. Bob Joyce across the line, cutting right in. He shoots, and he hoisted it wide in the net. And the Arrows have a two-on-one the other way, but the Solar Bears able to get back. Arrows with a chance, maybe on a two-on-one, but Solar Bear is showing their hustle. Mark Lamp back in his own end. He'll move it up, but we've got a whistle and an offsides call being made against the Solar Bears. That's that new rule in the IHL where you have to let the team carry the puck out. And that will cost the Solar Bears like an icing call as they will bring the face off back into the Orlando end. And Al Connor and Mike Yo nearly connecting. Well, Mike Yo just showing great hustle, taking the puck away. But Scott Legrand also so showing great hustle by getting out of the net. A lot of goaltenders would wait on that. Legrand seems like he's playing very aggressive tonight, very confident. He does not mind playing against the arrows. He was telling some people before the game down by the locker room that he enjoys playing against the arrows. He seems to play very well in the summit. He was looking forward to the challenge of playing tonight as he has not played in such a long time because of Al Bester, who's played very, very well for the Solar Bears. Yeah, I, I was wondering what the call is that's going on here. Now they're going to bring the face off outside the arrow end here, and I think what they're thinking was that the Solar Bears never played the puck. If they play the puck, then the whistle sounds. I'm wondering if they're deciding it's an inadvertent whistle. Well, and, and I did not see a Solar Bear go back into the end zone, so I think this is the correct call to bring it back down to the Arrows neutral zone. Real quickly, let's throw it down to Rob Dobson. Do you know what's going on down there, Dauber, about the call? No, no, happened down here. Hello, Dauber. Down. The same thing happened. Down. Exact same, yep. exact Dauber, same thing. do you know what they're talking about the call? Yeah, there's a bit of a question going on. We agree with what was called here. However, it was missed down at the other end earlier in the game, and I think what it does is it it kind of takes some scoring chances away from us and as well as them. And it just, all you ask for is consistency, and it was just a, a good call here, but a missed call at the other end of the ice. All right, thank you. Puck is in the Orlando zone. Here's Mark Gregg in behind. There's still 14 on the power play. Came back to Basicio. Rewenk tees it up, lets the shot go. That was blocked. It was blocked by Ferner, and it's back down into the arrow end. Arrows working very hard down low, though, to get that puck back out to give Darcy Warenka a chance to make the shot on net. The Arrows turn it around, but the power play is over. It's in Orlando territory, and it's in the corner for Trevor Sim. He is tied up by Bowler, and the Solar Bears will take over. In his own zone, it's Mark Ferner. Escort the pass to center ice for Clayton Norris. Dump the puck in. Back goes Werwenka. Shabbat will steer it behind the gate. Darcy will turn the puck around as he was hauled down, but he was able to get it out at center ice. Al May across the line. Al May working hard in the corner. He was shouldered along the boards by Todd Richards. Moose Morris set in there to have a look at things. And out at center ice come the Solar Bears. Sean Carter fired it in. It. It's Steve Jakes. He's pushed along the boards. And here's Clayton Norris. Give it to Felsner. Sends in. Here's the shot by Carter. Stuck aside by Shabbat. And it's not out. Held in by the Solar Bears. Clayton Norris sends it back down for Brian Felsner. Hit by Jakes. And Morissette is there. Dave Morissette rumbles up ice. Give it to Aaron Bow. He'll meander through the neutral zone. Hit the line. Trying to center one. It's into the slot, but the arrows couldn't get there. May centered one, poked away by Legrand. Here's Aaron Bow. Looks for the shot. Bow, the wrist shot, blocked by Richards. And the Solar Bears are back to center. Richards rolled one to Felsner, but Aaron Bow going back. He lost an edge. He was abandoned a little bit, and Dave Tippett wanted a penalty. Won't make the call, though. Into the corner, Norris battling with Jakes. They kick and grind and dig, and finally we get a whistle, and play is halted. Under five minutes to go in the first, and the Solar Bears still lead this 1-0. Orlando with a 1-0 lead, and Frederick Shabbat skates about as sharp as the edge of town. And, and he also has a little extra metal plating under his right foot and his left foot. And what it is, it's a metal plating, so when he goes side to side, his plastic 
on his skates does not slip. He has metal, so it digs into the ice. That is why Frederick Shabbat is so quick side to side. He does not trip on the plastic. Just a great addition to his equipment. Does Dobson have the same thing on his skates? No, I don't think, uh, he never had it last year, but Frederick Sabat seems to have a lot of extra equipment that Rob Dobson's trying to pick up on. Yeah, and the only reason I ask that is Dobson, I would think, is probably regarded as the best skater in the IHL amongst goalies. I used to hate it when we did skating drills. They used to have to put a last shoe on him to slow him down. <laughs> Puck is out at center ice. And it's brought across by Kevin Smith. You still have to last you me when I get up the stairs to the press box. Here is Al Conroy. Rolls the puck along the boards. And it's jumped on by Freer and cleared to center. Shoot chuck advances for Conroy. He's got a lane down the right side. Cutting in. Good job defensively by Ferner. Conroy fighting for it. It hit the referee. It's back along the boards. And Kevin Smith will clear it. Here's a three-on-two rush for the Solar Bears. Across the line, Smith to Beaufay. Right into bar. Centered. And a great defensive play by Hurl, but he slid in front to close down the passing lane, and the arrows turn it around. Under four to play in the first period, a 1-0 Orlando lead, and we've got another penalty coming up, and it's again on the Orlando Solar Bears. It is going to be a slash, and the arrows will get their second power play of the night. When you watch Houston Arrows hockey on Fox Sports, you could win a trip for two on Southwest Airlines for a sportsman vacation. They'll look like a pro with a $500 Academy gift certificate and enjoy a $500 Ace Travel House certificate for ground transportation. Watch the game, listen for your cue to call in and win a sportsman vacation from Southwest Airlines. Ends up Mike Hurl, but getting two-handed by Buffet. So that, that has to hurt Mike Hurl, but a lot of times you get them in between padding. People believe hockey players have all this padding on. I can speak by looking at players' equipment is that in the stomach area there's no padding, and a lot of times on the in part of the arm there's no padding. When you get slashed there, you feel it for a few days. Off the face off, arrows loop it down into the corner. Yo giving chase, he's tied up by Buchanan. Rolled it behind the net, Bowler trying to center one. Yo Bowler, base of the right circle, threw it off skates though, and Bob Joyce will shoot it the length of the ice. Arrows again, trying to work it back to the point. All night long, you're gonna watch the arrows when they're on the power play, getting it back to the point, back to the basics, getting it on net of the Solar Bears. Aaron Bow with the puck in his own end. He'll send it up the boards and out at center. It'll go into the Orlando zone as Meaton gives chase. He's forced by Bowler, and he'll shoot that out at center ice. Arrows regroup at center. Aaron Bow. He'll move it up at center. Fired into Orlando territory. Valisevic gives chase. Mike Yo popped it free. It bounces into the circle, and Buchanan will clear it out. I'll tell you what, that's very close to being a penalty for closing your, your glove on the puck. You can hand pass it, but it looked like Buchanan had his glove closed on the puck, and that is a penalty. Well, he ended up faking a one-arrow player and then throwing it on his backhand. That was very close to being a two-minute call. Here is a pass out at center for Gary Chuk. Chuk speeding across the line. Toss it over for Lamb at 45 to go on the power play. Lamb rolled it down for Chuk. Here is Lamb again. Mark Lamb for Al Conroy, getting set, threw it off skates. Conroy sets up again, meanders toward the slot, give it to Lamb, looks in front, centered, here's the chance for Conroy. He couldn't quite get his stick on it. A nice pass from Lamb, and Conroy nearly got a good chance, but it's back down the ice. Pearl, but back behind the cage with 20 to go on the power play. Pearl, but winds it up to center for Lamb. He'll shoot the puck in, out of the net with Grant. He'll clear it himself. It'll bounce over Morlenko's stick and out the center. With two minutes to play in the period, and Orlando with a 1-0 lead. And if Scott Legrand does one thing a little better than Alan Bester, it's playing the puck. Right there, he gets the puck on his stick and blasts it out. Here's Freer cutting in. He sent it for Greg, and a terrific sliding save by Legrand. That give and go worked nice, but Legrand read it. Lamb picks it loose behind the net. He centered, and it was deflected by Todd Richards to his own man, but Legrand was ready. He will hold on just as the power play expires. Teams are at five aside. 1.37 to go in the first period in a 1-0. Santa, or, uh, Orlando Lee. And Scott Legrand winning 17 games last year, career high, makes a very good decision here by staying down low in his stance, taking away all the bottom of the ice. Al Conroy could not get the handle on the puck as the Solar Bears team had collapsed. 
so that Scott LeGrand did not even face a shot, but he was in a position to make a save if he had to. Arrows, here's Jakes with a drive, ricocheted wide of the net, Beaufay redirects, Jakes held, rolled it down to the corner, Barry Dreger sends it along for Ferner, he was hit along the boards by Mark Gray, and here is Freer, Mark Freer, along the near side, scooping for it was Beaufay, as Freer continues to dig along the boards, and the Solar Bears have it right back. Dreger. In the corner, hit by May. Gives to Beaufay, he'll redirect it out at center ice, and Jake shoots it back in, but the Arrows have to regroup. They have to let the Solar Bears come out with it, and that's gonna be a whistle. As we're under a minute to go in this first period, and a 1-0 Orlando lead. And Dave Tibbet cannot be displeased the way his Arrows have played. The one thing his boards have done very well tonight, they've been very physical on the Solar Bear defense. Last night, the Solar Bears played. They played two nights prior to that, three games and four nights. You want to hammer their defense. That's what he was instructing his boards today. Get in on their defense, make them tired. Second game in as many nights for the Solar Bears. They have won 10 in a row and lead this one, one to nothing. Lock is out to center. Solar Bears advance it with 45 seconds to go in the period. Beaufay trying to cut down the left side. Kupke takes it to the board with a big hit. Old Kupke returning to the lineup after having a bad back. And you need the size like that back there, especially with Kuchera being recalled to the Vancouver Canucks. Beaufay. Moves it around, a pass over to Kevin Smith, right back to Beauface, sends to Barr. He looks in front, Hurlba trying to pop it away. Here's a pass along the boards. Can the arrows get there? Yo lost his stick. It's in the skates of Kevin Smith. He looks in front, lets a shot go. Somehow, Shabbat got a toe on that, and Conroy will bring it out with 10 seconds to go in the period. Conroy out at center, hammered along the boards by Buchanan. And now it is Mark Lamb. Three seconds left. Lamb trying to get the shot away, having his stick held. But no matter what the crowd protests, they will not get the call as Lamb could not get the shot away nor his stick away. And the Arrows, after 20 minutes of action, trailing one to nothing. But Dave Tippett, I think, very pleased about his team's effort. Well, he has to be. His forwards were physical. There was a lot of communication. They worked as units. And that is the only way you can beat the Solar Bear hockey team. All right. It's one nothing. The Solar Bears lead it. Up next, we'll throw it to the clubhouse. We'll be back. minutes of action have been played here at the summit and we're glad to have you with us tonight Adam Gordon Troy Gamble and again you look at this hockey game and and if the arrows get a couple of their chances to go by uh, Scott Legrand they have a good chance to lead in this hockey game well they, they played very well the one thing that they did very well in the first period is their forwards were physical they have to get all over this defense very good defense the solar bears have so if they get on them all period by the second and third period they'll wear down yeah and I think you know Dave Tippett was talking about seeing the, the big guys step up. He saw it in the Kansas City game, the Al Conroys, Gary Shuchucks. And again, even though they haven't scored and gotten any points, they've stepped up tonight. Well, they, they've all played well tonight, and that's what Dave Tippett needs. He doesn't just need his big guys, Adam. He needs every player to step up on the Arrows team in order to beat this very good Solar Bear hockey team. And the only goal was actually a fluke goal, Troy, and it was one that kind of started after Ferner broke his stick. Well, Ferner breaks his stick, and Felsner's the guy who's Johnny on the spot. Just gets it from behind. Frederick Shabbat is down. Frederick Shabbat on this type of play has to square up to the one-timer. Once he breaks his stick, no one knows where the puck goes. And we know where it goes in the net. Felsner, his fifth on the power play at 345. Mark Ferner and Todd Richards get the assist. That's the only goal. But the Arrows almost got one on a mark for a breakaway. Well, it was a great play by Warenka. He gets the blue line, so he's on side. Fires a rocket pass to Mark Freer. The only problem was the puck would not stop bouncing. Mark Freer trying to go upstairs, but could just not beat him upstairs as Legrand lies down on the ice. Then Frederick Shabbat was up to the task at the other end, Adam. Made a couple very good saves. Makes a very good save on Boyer on the top of his crease. Down in his crouch style, Basijo clears the puck away from him. Mike Yo showing hustle. You talk about guys that are stepping 
stepping up this year. Mike Yo jumping on a loose puck, trying to get in on Legrand, but Legrand very wisely jumps out of his net and clears the loose puck from Mike Yo. And when people have talked about the Orlando Solar Bears and how terrific Alan Bester has been, and he has been good, he's leading the IHL in goaltending this year. Everybody's kind of forgotten about Scott Legrand, who I thought was equally as good as Bester last year, and it seems like his ice time's gone down a little bit this year. Well, Scott Legrand last year ended up getting the first ever Solar Bear win, had a shutout last year, had 17 wins, a career year for him. But when you're playing behind a guy like Alan Bester, it's just tough to get ice time. Tonight he gets a chance, and he's played very well so far. All right, a one nothing hockey game. The Orlando Solar Bears lead it. When we return, we'll look at the community calendar plus the period stats. We'll be right back. Portions of tonight's game are brought to you by the Gatorade Company. You live life, you get thirsty. Life's a sport, drink it up. And also brought to you by Chili's Grill. Chili's Grill's no part like no place else. A 1-0 Orlando Solar Bear lead after 20 minutes of action as we're just about ready to get started with the second period. And let's take a look at tonight's first period stats. Brought to you by your local Texas Chrysler Plymouth dealer, the shots even at eight apiece. Power play, well, that's the telling stat, only in the sense that that's the only goal we've had. A power play goal from Brian Felsner. Four power play shots for Orlando to just one for the Arrows. Penalty minutes are even at four apiece. And the faceoffs, 13-9. But tell you what, Troy, I, I'm not one that usually disputes stats, but uh, I really thought Orlando had the bulk of the faceoffs in that first period, especially on the power play. Well, on the power play, they were very strong. The one stat we don't have up there tonight is hits. And I think the Arrows have been a lot more physical than the Solar Bears, and that will be a key stat in the second and third period as the arrows try to wear down this Orlando team. Alan Bester who started the last two meetings against the Houston Arrows obviously on the bench and we mentioned that he is uh, leading the IHL in goaltending this year and Alan Bester is a guy that uh, really each year has picked up his play but it's an interesting story about Alan Bester and Don Waddell they play Bester played for Don in San Diego and Alan Bester attributes just about all his success that he has had to Don Waddell he is very thankful to Don Waddell and in talking with him during the Turner Cup finals last year that's who he spoke very highly of the most. Well, Donnie Waddell showed confidence in him, and in return, he's played very well for this Orlando organization. Uh, and, and Donnie showed confidence, really, in a lot of guys that he had in San Diego and that he brought with him to Orlando. And really, every one of those guys has played well for him. He's in the arrow end as we start this second period. And it's brought up to Al Conroy. Conroy, across the line, quick shot, stopped by Scott Legrand. They're pinching down the left side. Shoot Chuck steers it in. And it's rolled down low for Mark Beaufay. He'll move it up the boards and cleared out at center ice. Barr tried to advance it. And Freer will roll it to Al Conroy. He had to wait. Shoot Chuck had kind of gone in ahead of the play. And the arrow's back to center. Krupke fired it though right to Kevin Smith. And that is taken back by the Solar Bears. They'll bring it across the line. Here's Dave Barr cutting in. Barr shouldering with Krupke. They both go hard to the ice. Krupke got back up and he'll play it. Mark Gregg. He'll move it out at center ice. Lead pass. Shoot shot got in behind him. Buchanan chopped him away. And it's taken back by Chris Miller. Miller, the lead pass for Zach Boyer. He'll clear it out at center. And Al May has to go back. Give it to Lamb. And the Solar Bears turn it around, but the Arrows get it right back. Minute and a half gone in this second period. A 1-0 Solar Bear lead. Vesigio, give it over to Mark Lamb. Had it in his skates. Fished out by Sean Carter. Jake's trying to clear the zone. It is moved out at center. Got through Boyer, and the Arrows will have to try it again. Dave Vesigio placed that high in the air. Solar Bears fight for it, and it'll go down for Al May. He'll pop it into the Solar Bears zone. Legrand comes out of the net. Swing it over to Felsner. Watched by Jake's. Moving down along the boards. Chris Miller, though, was able to turn around and clear it out to center ice. Vesigio ripped the puck ahead, but skipped away by Richards, and here come the Solar Bears, two on one. Felsner cutting in, Felsner centering it, it went just wide, it was in the skates of Sean Carter, and Al May will clear it ahead to Mark Lamb, who popped it out at center ice. Here is Sean Carter, trying to skip through Besigio, he's right in on goal, and a shot and a stop by 
Shabbat, but a penalty coming up to Dave Vesigio. Dave Vesigio getting beat wide by Carter. Carter showing that very good burst of speed. Dave Vesigio, last resort, instead of letting him go in on a total breakaway, tries to sweep. He was trying to sweep at the puck. He was just a little bit back too far. He could not get that full extension out to touch the puck as if he touches the puck first and then follows through. It's not a penalty. He just was short about six inches on that blade. Could not get it fully out. Frederick Shabbat made a very good save. So the third power play on tap for the Orlando Solar Bears is Vesigio in the box. A couple of minutes for tripping. And a face off to the left of Shabbat. Let's go down to Rob Dobson. Dobber, my question for you is, uh, Dave Here's Tippett, was he pleased with that first period? Well, he was pleased to summit with some things that we've done, Adam, but uh, I'm a little displeased with others. One was on the power play goal. Our goal tonight is to pressure them so they don't get many chances. And we have to pay a little bit more attention to detail. One is to get the pucks in and uh, to really just take care of the little things, and that'll help us win the hockey game. Thanks, Dobber. Puck is controlled by Bese er, by uh, Beaufet. He'll move it down as Besigio in the box for the tripping minor. Here's Dave Byer, sets up on the left side. One for two on the power play. Solar Bears out of this far. Byer cuts the puck down low, gets it right back as Kevin Smith sets up in the middle. Here is Barr, looks in front. Smith still wreaking some traffic. Here's a shot that hit the post, and it bounds right back out. The arrow is able to clear the rebound, and here's Bill Bowler. He'll cram that thing the length of the ice. And I believe Smith got a stick on that, deflecting it to the post. Frederick Shabbat, though, was in a very good position to make the save, but off the post, goalie's best friend. Solar Bears will turn the puck around with a minute 10 to go on the power play. Smith across the line, dropped it back for Boyer. Here is Ferner, slides it for Boyer. Beaufet on the back door, but it's still to the far side. Ferner the drive, that was blocked in front. It never made it to Shabbat. Loosened up by Kevin Smith. Back to the line for Ferner, rolled it to Smith. It's chopped away by Shuchuk and out at center. Gary Shuchuk doing a great job up at the point, making sure that if they get point shots, they're from the side, they're not from the middle of the ice. Here is Sean Carter, gives to Boyer down low. 35 to go in the Solar Bear power play. Sean Carter gives to Boyer. Arrows fight for it. Jake's got it to Shuchuk, couldn't clear the zone. Bounds back to Shuchuk, and this time he's able to wrap it down the ice. Four minutes gone, second period. A 1-0 Solar Bear lead with 15 to go on the power play. Carter across for Felsner. Frederick cuts to the net. Now picks up the puck near side. Came back to Neaton. The shot right in. Here's Felsner. Stop by Shabani. will hold on. A nice pass to Brian Felsner looking for his second goal of the night. But Frederick Shabbat had other things to say. Matt Neaton making a very delicate pass down to Felsner. Felsner was on the doorstep to Frederick Shabbat. He turns around. He tries to end up going five hole. But Frederick Shabbat just pounces down on the puck. Mike Curl, but coming back and forcing Felsner. Felsner, you know, anytime your D can come back and help the goalie like that, if a player has too much time, I don't care who you are, you cannot make the saves all night. Frederick Sabat getting help from Mike Curl, but it was coming back and forcing Felsner to shoot a little quicker than he wanted to. Four seconds left to Besigio, and a face-off, a key face-off to the right side of Frederick Sabat. Sticks down, drop of the puck, and the arrows have it. Curl, but... Rolled it along the boards. It was in traffic. Kupke knocked it down. The penalty to Besigio is over. Teams at five aside. Here is Krupke. Scoops it along the boards. Besigio will play it, and he will clear it out at center ice. Buchanan will go back into his own end. Four check by Lamb. Buchanan trying to clear, and it came up to Bob Joyce, and here come the Solar Bears. They'll romp through the neutral zone. Joyce dropped it back. Boyer cutting in. The shot stopped by Shabbat. He looked behind him, thinking that puck got through him five hole, but he was able to hold on. 15-14 to go in the second, and the Solar Bears with a 1-0 lead. Joe Frederick with a very good scoring chance. The reason it's very good is he uses a different type of shot. It's not a slap shot, it's not a wrist shot. It's almost like a sweet shot trying to fool Frederick Shabbat. Frederick Shabbat holding his ground and pouncing on it, but he almost beats him five hole. Frederick Shabbat reaching back with his glove, making sure it doesn't dribble by. That's not a slap shot or a snap shot. That was almost like a sweep snapper shot. You don't see too many of those shots. Joe Frederick digging deep into his bag of tricks for that type of shot. 
The face off to the left side of Frederick Shabbat. And the Solar Bears win the draw. Chris Miller lets the shot go, deflected by Moose. Morris said it went to the corner. Jakes is there for Houston, trying to clear. In there for Greg. He will scoop it ahead, and Mark Lamb scampers to center ice. Lamb gives to Greg across the line, looks in. He centered the shot. Wow, what a save there by LeGrand. Coming up, Grant with a left pad save and a beauty. Oh, Scott LeGrand with maybe one of the saves of the year as the Arrows work that play to perfection. The only thing they couldn't do was get it by LeGrand. Mark Grant making a great pass across the net to Basigio. Could not get it in. Dave Morissette also driving hard to the net. Could not get it, and it ended up being deflected by Richards, who was coming back trying to pick up Dave Morissette set but it was all created by the great pass and the pressure the CJ driving to the net Dave Moore set driving to the net when you have players driving hard to the net a lot of things can happen Richards almost puts it in his own net face off to the right side of Scott Legrand a line of Bowler Valasevic and Yo with a defensive unit of Wurwanka and Aaron Bow. And the Solar Bears have got it. It's cleared out at center. Sim tried to advance it, but back is Aaron Bowe. Bowler back. He'll give it over to Werwanka. It's shot out at center, and Bowler brings it up with Valasevic, but he overskated the puck. Bowler again lets Werwanka take it. It's brought across the line. Werwanka steers it down for Yo. Mike Yo looking behind the net, wanted to go to Valasevic. Sim had him tied up, though. In there's Valasevic. Gives to Bill Bowler, and he'll move in. Bowler. Circles back along the boards, tossed it for Yo behind the net. Mike Yo gives to Valasevic as the arrows cycle it. It is Bowler trying to make his move around Miller. Yo came pinching in, but it was worked away by Chris Miller. Shot along the boards and back down the ice. Aaron Bow going back, and this will be an icing fall on Orlando, and the faceoff will be brought back into Orlando territory. Dave Tippett always likes those players driving hard to the net because when players drive hard and every once in a while when that D sneaks in, a lot of different things can happen. Whether your own player tips it, whether it goes off a skate with all that traffic in front, Mark Gregg just throwing that pass across, almost gets put in by Richards into his own net. Face off, left side of Scott Legrand. And shoot shot comes out with Freer and Al Conroy. Pearl butt from the point, loops it down low for Conroy. Conroy trying to cut in. He was shaded off the puck. Freer goes in to have a look at things. Mark Freer hoisted off the puck. It came along the boards, and Kevin Smith was able to clear it out at center ice. Arrows have to go back to their own zone. Gord Krupke is there, watched by Clayton Norris. Here's Al Conroy. He'll send it along the boards. Shuchuk able to clear it out at center. Freer couldn't find the handle, and Dranger is back. Freer gives chase as Drager smacked it along the boards. It'll come back. Conroy pinching, got it down for Freer, but Drager slides that away, and the Solar Bears get it out. Here's a two-on-one, cutting in. Beaufay right in. He looks in front, centered, but it skipped over the stick of Norris, and Pearl but played that pretty well. Shuchuk across the line. Pop back, Conroy right in, and the grand misplayed it, and Shuchuk couldn't turn because Freer was in his way. Now Conroy behind the net. Center, Jakes the shot. And he counted it just wide. What a pass from Conroy. Now Freer, the wrist shot, right on. Stopped by Legrand, and Drager will clear it. The arrow's peppering the net, but can't get anything by Legrand. Hurlbutt. Pass for Freer. Drager had fallen but he got back up and then had his pocket picked by Greg and here is Suchuk down the left side right in pointing shooting but blocked by Ferner arrows are getting their chances but they can't get anything by him Lock his shot back down and into arrow territory with 12 and a half good to go shift, in the second boys, period and a one nothing solar bear lead Mark Gregg, a pass out at center. Neaton lost it. Here comes Moose Morissette across the line with Lamb. Morissette had it poked away by Neaton. Now the puck into the corner. Grappling in there was Morissette, but it was ridden away by Buchanan. Cleared to the line, not up. Held in by Basigio. Popped it down along the boards. Intercepted by the Solar Bears. Here they come. Across the line. Buchanan to Felsner. Right in for Buchanan, but Shabbat steered that aside. Sean Carter from his knees. Hauled down by Lamb. Jakes takes over for Houston, and Morissette will turn to not clear. Boyer had 
it come out at center, and the Solar Bears are back. 11.35 to go in the second period, and the Solar Bears still with a 1-0 lead. Steve Jakes got the puck ahead. He shot it into Orlando territory. They say no icing. They felt that the uh, Solar Bears could have played it. Ripped off the boards as Morissette jamming Sean Carter right through the boards with a big hit. And now Morissette getting into it with Carter a little bit. And the linesman to discuss matters, but play is whistled down. 11-19 to go in the second period. Still a 1-0 Orlando lead. A 1-0 Orlando lead with 11-19 to go, and it took a goal by Moose Morissette against the Phoenix Roadrunners to maybe get this crowd to recognize who he really is. Well, if you come out to the summit, the fans are really getting into it when Dave Moose Morissette is on the ice. They're all chanting Moose, Moose, and the reason why is because this guy loves to throw his body around, and he makes some very big hits. Here he just keeps his feet on the ice and drives all the way through. Fans love that physical play of Moose Morissette. And he had the goal of the year so far with that spin a rammer goal. His first and only goal of the year. But what does he also have? 59 penalty minutes. An inspiration to this hockey team, no doubt. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> also a, the first ever recipient of the Antler Award. Aptly, I guess, you can't say it was named after him, but you can obviously say that it has uh, the tones of, of Moose Morissette in it by calling it the Antler Award. All right, we're back to action. The trivial stuff we come up with here to keep you informed, and we just know that the public is happier now that we get this stuff out. Mike Hill trying to clear, could not. It was bounced away, and it's jumped on by Malisevic. Turned out at center for Bill Bowler. They'll bring it across the line. Yo giving chase. Looks along. That was swept away by Miller. And the shoulder there is trying to close. Malisevic puts the body to Bob Joyce. Sim hits the line. Cuts the pass over to Joe Frederick. Yo's got it, and it's shot out at center ice through Miller and back into shoulder Bear territory. Ten and a half to go in the second. One nothing Orlando. Miller. Shoots the puck, it was held in though. Here's Aaron Boa, shot blocked. It was turned away by Joyce, again couldn't clear it. Aaron Boa, another shot, again swept away by Legrand. Richards again trying to clear it, and once again, Boa held it in, but this time it's poked out at center. Frederick got it into arrow territory. Shabbat will slow it for the first man back. That's Darcy Wawanka as the arrows trying to catch the Solar Bears in a line change. Here's a pass, Bowler, but he's in ahead offside. Oh, had those eager eyes, but Wawanka's pass just a little late. Or maybe Bowler a little early, one of the two, you figure it out, but we're halfway through this hockey game and it is still 1-0. Orlando. Academy Sports and Outdoors presents the Houston Arrows Fan Pack. This offer entitles you to an Arrows ticket, one hot dog, a small soft drink at the Summit for just $10. Stop by any Academy Sports and Outdoors and pick up a coupon today. No purchase necessary. Remember, there isn't a better way to enjoy an Arrows hockey game than with your Academy Sports and Outdoors Fan Pack. Yeah, fans enjoying this one, a 1-0 Orlando lead, but the Arrows with some quality chances in this second period. Barry Drager able to sweep it out at center ice, and Kevin Smith in transition for Mark Bofay. Hits the line. Bofay cutting in, but it was knocked away by Freer, and here come the Houston Arrows. Freer down the right side with Gary Shuchuk. Freer pulls up, looks for a man to pass to, then steers it down, but Shuchuk ran into Mark Ferner, and the net became dislodged, and... Uh, Shuchuk wanting to get a penalty here, but I don't think uh, he's going to get the call. Well, Mike, Mark Ferner goes back, and Gary Shuchuk gave him a little tap, but Ferner ends up going all the way back into the net. That's what 12th-year pro players do. Ended up being the top-scoring defenseman last year, but it ends up he ends up forcing. Jeez, that, that's a close call right there with Ferner going back and driving Shuchuk all the way, then turning his body in a position to uplift the net off its moorings. Last year, had a so-so year, but in playoffs was the top scoring defenseman on that Orlando Solar Bear team. Off the face off, the Solar Bears have got it. Barry Drager from behind the net, takes a bump from Freer. Smith rolled it ahead for Beaufay, and he's out to center. Give it to Dave Barr. Barr, the pass, right back to Drager, hits the line. Drager centered it, but he just missed Beaufay cutting down the left side. 
Conroy turns it around for Houston. Through the neutral zone across the line. But shoot shot. And Conroy offsides. And the faceoff back out to center ice. It's time for your chance to win a trip for two on Southwest Airlines. And I will take caller number 10 at area code 713-789-1069. You can win a trip for two on Southwest Airlines. You also can enjoy a $500 Academy gift certificate and a $500 H Travel House certificate for ground transportation. We'll announce the winners or the winner at the end of the second intermission. Again, the number 789-1069. And I guess a lucky Arrow fan could take that fan pack and go on the road maybe with the Arrows one road trip. Yeah, there's some great cities that uh, you can go down and watch the Arrows. Well, you're heading tomorrow, are you not, Adam, out to Las Vegas? I am off, but my wallet is staying home. I made a pact with myself this time. As Neaton moves down the left side, trying to center it, Jakes had knocked it away. Neaton take to, taken to the boards by Jakes. And here's Sean Carter, but Besigio wrestled that away and got it out at center ice. Mark Great giving chase, but Buchanan got back, chipped it along the boards. Arrow's trying to hold it in, but they could not. That will be an offsides call, and that will produce a faceoff outside the Orlando zone. We've got 8.48 to go in the second. And the Orlando Solar Bears leading by a score of one to nothing. We'll be right back. A bevy of chances, but bevyless goals, if that makes sense. I don't think it does, but it is one nothing Orlando with 8.48 to go in the second. Jeff Buchanan, one of the toughest guys in the IHL, plays very tough. But this year, his plus minus is top in the IHL at plus 17. He's doing it on the defensive side also. That'd be less of chances. No, I think just a not as not as many chances or not as many goals. I gotta correct my English here. I'll have people all over me. All right. Here's Hurlbutt. He'll scoop the puck ahead. It was intercepted by Kevin Smith. Turn it down the left side for Dave Bark. Slicing in. He centered one. Smith the drive. That was blocked. It's loose in the slot. Hurlbutt had it and got it down. Conroy. Conroy motors to center ice. Arrows bring the puck in and Grand wanted to play it, but Pat Neaton is there for Orlando. As Mike Hurlbutt makes a change with Aaron Bowen. and the arrows get. Krupke and Bull out there against this Beaufet line. Here's Neaton cutting in with a shot. Stop by Shabbat. Rebound. Score! It was Neaton that got in on the rebound and was able to beat Frederick Shabbat. It is 2 0 Orlando. And it ended up being a, a two on one. Neaton takes the shot. Frederick Shabbat kicks out his left leg. Neaton stays with it and ends up putting it past Frederick Shabbat. It ends up being a two on one on. Bo, he shoots the puck, kicks out the foot, but still drives hard to the net. Ends up putting it back on his backhand, but Neaton doing it all on his own, firing the first shot, then had the presence of mind to drive where the loose puck was, was just sitting there. Aaron Bo could not clear Neaton out of the way. He ends up putting it past the sprawl of Frederick Shabbat. And Neaton has his sixth of the year, and the Solar Bears lead it two to nothing. Here come the Solar Bears. Joe Frederick down the right side, taken away by Werwenka, and Darcy scampers to center ice. Werwenka shoots the puck in, batted down by Richards. Here's a centering pass, knocked away. Yo into the corner. Mike Yo rolled it down for Bill Bowler. Richards is in there. Bowler trying to knock it away, and it caroms over to Frederick, but he couldn't clear. Now Bow the shot, and that was hammered wide of the net. Along the boards where Wanka golfs it down for Bill Bowler. Yo cuts to the net. Bowler trying to shake off a check. Looks along the boards. Now circles back around Todd Richards. He centered one, but he missed everybody with a pass, a hard pass that went through. And Frederick turns it around. Give it to Chris Miller. Dropped it back. The shot by Frederick. He, Frederick, he went upstairs on a Frederick Shabbat and missed the net. Bob Joyce got it back along the boards to Trevor Sim. It went into the Arrows slot, but it was cleared to center with under seven minutes to go in the second period. Aaron Bow tried to work it ahead. Felsner lost it. It's back down low, and here is Shabbat to cover up, and he will hold on. So 6.45 to play in the second, 2-0 Orlando. Frederick Shabbat starting his 10th in the row on the year. That is a lot of work. The one stat that I, I found on Frederick Shabbat, 
He's played 10 games at home, has a 2.92 goals against, but has a four win against six losses at home. But his save percent is 90%. Weird stats for a goaltender. Usually with that, you'd have a lot more wins. He ends up making a good save here, getting down low. Well, he didn't have to make the save there, but he was in the position to force the player to shoot it wide. And you talk around the league about how good Frederick Shabbat is. Every team says the same thing. He forces you to make a great shot to beat him. There, Frederick could not beat him because he was in such good position. Forced him to go high. He ends up going two feet high over the net. Face off in the circle to the right side of Frederick Shabbat. Mark Lamb with Dave Morissette and Mark Craig. Against the Carter, Boyer, and Felsner line, which has a goal tonight. Boyer gets it back to Ferner. The shot stopped by Shabbat. And Steve Jakes will turn that around and hoist it the length of the ice. This will be another icing call. As back to play is Mark icing Ferner. And the faceoff will come back down into Arrow territory. Dave Tippett knew after the first period the arrows were going to be in tough even though that they are wearing down the solar bears the solar bears 9-0-1 when they lead after the first period but i'm sure that he felt that if they wore them down they'd have a great chance of winning this hockey game well i'm sure dave typically glad to see frederick shabbat making some good saves tonight like this one well, he's always in that position. He's down low, takes away all the bottom of the ice. The defense there to clear it away. Steve Jakes throws it high off the glass. That's what he expects from his defense. Let Frederick Shabbat make the first save, clear the rebound. On the second goal, he makes the first save. They don't clear the rebound. It goes in the net. Dave Vesigio has it out at center ice. He'll shoot the puck into the Orlando zone. Out of the net, Legrand shoots it along the wall. Here's Vesigio, sends it back down for Morissette. A uh, pass for Greg. Mark Greg shakes off one check, cuts in, looks to tee it up, rolled it down for Lamp. Back to Greg. The shot deflected just wide by Morissette. Drager is there. And he will clear it out at center ice, and it's poked into arrow territory. Jinx on his horse. If he gets there, it's icing. He will. Icing and icing is the call. 6.02 to play in this second period. A 2 0 Orlando lead. Goals tonight by Pat Neaton and Brian Felsner. Kurt Frazier, I don't know what he says for his pregame talks, but they've won 10 in a row, Adam. The toughest thing is to motivate your players every night. This is their third game and fourth night. The one thing, as you talk to other players that have played for Kurt Frazier, he's a very good motivator, and he's saying the right things in that locker room for the Solar Bears. He's getting them ready, and he always has them ready for that first period. That is the one thing the Solar Bears are very prepared for that first period. Tonight, they were prepared once again. A shot from the point right on, and Legrand will cover up and hold on as Hurlbutt let that go. It's getting very tough now for the arrows forwards to get in front of the net as the Solar Bears, with having a two-goal lead, now are playing a little more defensive, playing from the inside out a little more, not taking as many chances on the offensive side. It's going to be very tough. The forwards are going to really have to battle now. They battle all night. Now they're even going to have to go up a little more to get those good scoring chances. Pat Neaton for Orlando shoots the puck into arrow territory. Conroy ridden into the wall by Dave Barr. Battle for the puck in the corner. Smith and Krupke. Kevin Smith kicked it away. He'll move it along the boards. Krupke trying to wrap him up. Smith loosens it up. Here's Beaufet trying to stuff one in there, but Mark Freer came away with it for Houston. Put it out at center and shoot. Chuck's got it. Left side across the line as Hurlbutt goes to the net. Hurlbutt, the shot went wide. And it came back to Gord Krupke. Runs it back down along the boards. Jeff Buchanan swings it along. Conroy's there. He centered it, but the Solar Bears are able to clear it. Kevin Smith lead pass just too far for Mark Beaufet. It would have been icing if the arrows could have gotten back. They were behind the play as Beaufet went in there. Shabbat forced to play it. And now it is Mark Freer. He'll shoot it off the boards, and this will go down the ice. And this will be an icing call, but then they'll wave that off. Under five to play in the second. 2-0 Orlando, and the Solar Bears caught the arrows in a line change. Here's a pass in front to Sim, and it goes wide of the net. Solar Bears came in as the arrows were a little late in their line change. Puck came in front and went through the crease, and it's picked up by Orlando. Joe Frederick looped it down, and Frederick Shabbat will cover up, and he will hold on. 2-0, the Solar Bears with four and a half to go, and we'll be back with more after this. Okay. 
Two nothing. The Solar Bears lead it with four and a half to go. We'll send it ice side to Rob Dobson. What do the Arrows got to do to to beat Scott Legrand and get to him in this period in the rest of the game? Well, I, I think that their defense has been playing pretty good in front of him. However, the shots that we have had opportunities to score, we've had a man in front. Uh, the last chance here with Mark Gregg with a shot with Moose Morissette. He's in front and he didn't see the puck very well. One thing that we did preach today, especially while working on our power plays, we have to get in front of their goalie. We can't make it easy. Shots on the blue line are nine times out of ten. If he sees it, he stops it. And I think that our best chances are driving harder than that, getting rebounds and getting guys in front. Robert, it's one thing if the team's not getting chances, but you guys are getting chances tonight. Yeah, I think we are, Adam, and it just seems that, uh, you know, either the puck starts bouncing or we're just missing them. But one thing that you can say is that we're driving to the net a lot better than we have in the past, and I think that that's going to open up a lot of doors for us here later in the game. Appreciate your comments. And a face-off to the left side of Frederick Shabbat. Off the face-off, it's controlled in Orlando, a shot just going wide. Down is Bowler, trying to move it through Frederick, cannot do it. Frederick came away with the puck, tossed it back to the line, scoops it down to Bob Joyce. Warwenka's got him locked up along the boards. Joyce trying to kick and dig and move it along to Frederick. He's worked on by Bowler. A quick shot gloved by Shabbat, and he will hold on with 4.15 left. In this second period, a 2-0 Solar Bear lead. Wise by Frederick Shabbat to glove that puck as the Solar Bears won the draw and then kept possession of the puck for 20 seconds. They ro were rotating it down low. Bob Joyce and Frederick using their size along the boards. Frederick Shabbat realizing that says, hey, I'm going to get a whistle. We'll get a line change, maybe match up a little better against that line. It doesn't get any easier for the Arrows. This wraps up a four-game homestand. They play in Vegas on Friday, home against Las Vegas on Sunday, and then five games in nine nights on the road, beginning in Winnipeg. And Adam, I'm going to warn you, take your uh, clothes that you can wear out in 40 below weather. You need your parka for that trip. I can't wear a swimsuit and t-shirt. Well, I, I'd never want to see that anyways. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Cam. Appreciate that. Here come the Solar Bears across the line into the corner. It ain't that bad, is it? Miller, left side, tees it up, shoots, and Shabbat down, deflects it over the glass and out of play with 3.53 to go in the second, 2-0 Orlando. Miller with a very good shot from the point, having one goal, two assists, three points on the year, but with a plus five rating. One thing, when you win 10 games in a row, most of the Solar Bear players have a plus rating in the plus minus category. Miller, one of them again. Well, and they boast actually the top three plus minus guys in the IHL. Trevor Buchanan is plus 17, Pat Neaton plus 16, and Sean Carter plus 15. Uh, and, and that just shows how good your defense is. That means they're clearing people in front of the net and they're pushing the puck up ice. Now it's going to be the arrow chance to break through and they need a goal. It'd be great for them to get a goal in this next 3.53 left in the second period. Off the draw, the arrows have it. Vasijo goes down, tied up by Felsner. And Jakes will play it away and the arrows are out at center ice. Greg across the line. Jakes goes to the net. Here's Lamb. The shot scores! just ends up being a great rush up the ice. Steve Jakes starts it. He's going to make the pass off to Greg, but Steve Jakes streams hard to the net, forcing the D to back up in order to give Mark Land the chance for the one-time shot. Steve Jakes does a great play in drawing the defense off Mark Land to give him a chance for the one-time shot. Mark Land does not miss, putting it inside the left post. And the arrows are within one, and here they come again. Greg across the line. Lamb is in, left side, shooting. It's blocked. Lamb got it back. Back to the line. Besiegio winding, shooting. Shooting was the grand as he got a left foot on it, and it's cleared out at center. Here come the arrows. Lamb, a pass just out of his reach. 
Going in with Felsner. Al May into the corner as Mark Lamb's got his fourth goal of the year. A puck centered, but right to the Orlando Solar Bear, Zach Boyer, and he'll shoot it back in to Frederick Shabbat. He will glove it and then play it over to Dave DeCigio. Solar Bears making wholesale player changes. A long lead pass. Goes through everybody and down the ice, and LeGrand comes out to play it. Swings it along the boards to Kevin Smith, waiting half boards near side. Hammered by Greg and May, but he still came away with a puck. Kevin Smith scampers to center. The pass for Barr. He'll hoist it into Arrow territory. Krupke back with Smith. Freer is there. Two and a half to go. In the second period, the Arrows trailing 2-1. A pass intercepted. Here come the Arrows in transition. Gary Shuchuk out at center ice. Shuchuk across the line with Conroy and Freer. Conroy had cut to the middle, but the Solar Bears were there to close it down, and Smith back the other way. Smith to Neaton, moving down left side. He centered, but Conroy turned it around, but he shot it right to Beaufay. Beaufay centered, the shot, score! Kevin Smith, and the Solar Bears come right back. It's 3-1 Orlando. Beaufay making a very good pass down to Smith, who's in all alone on Frederick Shabbat, going from his left to his right and ends up putting it five hole on Frederick Shabbat. Al Conroy trying to clear the zone, but ends up clearing it to Beaufay. Beaufay throws it all the way down to Smith, who kicks it up in his feet. What a great play by Smith to kick it up onto his blade and then go on his backhand through the legs of Frederick Shabbat. But it goes back that Al Conroy would love to have that pass back as Beaufay keeps it in and then sets up Smith. Eighth of the year for Kevin Smith. And the Arrows back down by two at three to one. The Arrows had gotten such a key goal late. Now they've given one up late. And the puck is cleared out at center. Jakes will go back. Bob Joyce in the fourth second, and it's controlled by Mike Yo and out the center. 1.45 left in the second period. Yo across the line, shooting, and a glove save made by LeGrand, and he will hold on. Key goal by the Solar Bears to come back after the arrows were rallying. They were playing a lot more physical. They were getting some good shots on LeGrand. But Buffet ends up keeping that puck in, stretching out to keep it in, and then feeding it down to Smith, who made a great play with his feet, soccer style, kicking it up. And I guess that's why Kurt Fraser signed this player away from the Hartford Whalers. He played in Hartford 21 games last year. Kurt Fraser knew he had a little bit of a goal scorer and a player that could play a little bit better defense. Get rid of Craig Fisher, 74 goals. You had a guy that can score and play defense. That line, top line in the league. Buffet, Barr, Smith. We talked about them earlier in the game. Craig who? Oh, yeah. All right. Here's Hal May. A shot right on. Stop by the grand. Craig, a backhander. Oh, did the grand get a piece of that? I don't know. But Mark Craig with a beautiful chance down the left side. And I don't know if he just missed the net or the grand got a piece of it. It's back out at center, and Lamb had it skip over his stick. Lamb cutting down, ridden out by Richards. They battle in the corner, loosened up by May. Down to a minute, 10 to go in the second. 3-1 Orlando. Here is Greg. Hammered by Miller. It's rolled away, and Barry Dreger takes over. He's hit by Al May, and it's Lamb. Kicked it down for May. He was bumped by Sean Carter as we're under a minute to go. Here's a pass and Lamb fanned on it. And Zach Boyer comes to center ice. Boyer, a pass for Miller. He got in, shooting, and Shabbat will make the save and he will hold on with 41 seconds left in the second period. And the Solar Bears lead it 3-1. Miller streaking down the wing. But Darcy Warenka keeping him on the outside. Frederick Shabbat, I'd say about 98 out of 100 times will make that save as Miller was far out. Frederick Shabbat just catching that glove save. But what a save at the other end by LeGrand reaching back. He's on his backhand. Greg is reaching back. That's, is that, a, is that, that a goal? That is a goal. That is a goal, folks. Great save by LeGrand to reach back, but that ends up from that angle. That is a goal. Looks like it is a goal for sure as he reached back while he was in the net to throw it out. Wow, Dave Tippett's gonna see that on replay. And uh, 
I don't know if we can look at that one again, but uh, that is, it, it, I guess if you're talking NFL, it's somewhat inconclusive, but it sure looked like that was in the net and a bad break for the Arrows. Here's Beaufay over the shot by Ferner, stopped by Frederick Shabbat. Well, that could right there, that could right there be your Gatorade play of the game. Well, Greg makes a great play on his backhand by swinging around and throwing it in the net. He's on his backhand, he throws it at the net, and Legrand uh -huh. back in his net. That is so close. Well, I his gloves, that you can see his gloves are clearly over the line. And, and if he's gonna hit the puck, I mean, the puck's gonna hit his glove. Well, he disguised it very well as the referee did not call it. It was one of those close calls down on the goal line, but from that angle, that looks definitely that would have been in. That would have been a huge break for the Arrows to go 3-2 in this hockey game. Well, let me put it this way: the Arrows leave for Vegas tomorrow, and I don't know if I want to play at their table with that luck. I mean, that's a goal. They worked so hard for that thing and not get it counting. As Drager will roll it down, it came out in front, and the Arrows turned the puck around. Here come the arrows from left to right across the line and we get a whistle and the arrows are off sides. Ten seconds left in the second period and Dave Tippett has got to be upset about that. Doesn't show it but I think it's killing him inside. Well I don't think he's upset right now because from his angle on the bench as he looked at that I'm sure he doesn't even know that that was a goal yet. It's very tough from his angle to see that as it was on the far side of the net for Dave Tippett. So when he goes into the room they'll like to see that on replay and then he'll be saying oh Greg did make a good play but he just did not get the call. Coming up in the second intermission stay with us we'll have the clubhouse update plus we'll have highlights for the second period do you think that Mark Greg shot will make it and we'll also announce our watch and win winner uh, as far as I'm concerned that could be your play of the game right there here is Greg he'll move it down it came down the grand poked it away Mark Lamb trying to work it in and that is the period a 3 1 solar bear lead Frederick Shabbat leaving the ice but uh, at least a wee bit of controversy going on right now because the arrows feel they should have a goal and are trailing 3-2 but right now they go into the intermission trailing 3-1 and obviously not an unattainable task and coming back well no they've come back this year being down going into the third period Dave Tibbet is just gonna have to preach to his players find a way stay positive this is a very tired hockey team keep taking it to them they'll give you opportunities all right three one the Solar Bears, and we'll throw it to the clubhouse right after this. Three-one hockey game after 40 minutes of play from the summit. Welcome back, Adam Gordon, Troy Gamble, and a uh, little controversy brewing here. In fact, talking with a lot of people in the press box that this saw it, especially down closer to the ice side where it happened. Everyone's saying it was a goal. Well, it certainly was, and we get the benefit of the doubt up here with the uh, replay. The one thing that would bother me as an arrow would be the goal judge. It's the goal judge's responsibility if he believes the puck has crossed the plane, crossed the plane of the goal line, he has to turn on that light for a goal. Yeah, and the replay doesn't show the puck going across, but what it does show is Scott Legrand's glove over the goal line. And the puck obviously hit his glove, so that would have to indicate that the I mean, let's face it, it's a tough call. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. But I would think that, you know, common sense just might dictate that if the glove is over the line and the puck hits the glove, the puck should be over the line. And we know a little bit about gloves. Rob Dobson loves his gloves. The goalie gloves now these days are so big. If it's behind that goal line, it is a goal. Let's take you back to the hockey game and look at our Dodge scoring summary. First period, Brian Felsner got his fifth of the year, a power play goal at 345 from Mark Ferner and Zach Boyer. It was 1-0 after one. Then in the second period, Pat Neaton his sixth at 12-01. Mark Beaufay getting the only assist. So it's 2-0. And then Mark Lamb got his fourth of the year at 1620. Mark Gregg, Steve Jakes getting the assist. And then Kevin Smith, his eighth of the year, was set at 1753. Beaufay getting the only assist. And it's 3-1. But we started off with a save, a terrific save from Scott Legrand. Well, he's been very good all game. And he slides across. Dave Moore said driving hard to the net. Richards deflects the puck in. But it's all created by arrows flying hard to the net. Then Neaton ends up scoring a goal by splitting the defense. He gets a beautiful pass by Buffet. Goes around. Aaron Bow shoots the puck. 
but has the presence of mind to go where the puck is, puts it in on a spoiled Frederick Chabot on his backhand. Pat Neaton with that nice goal, but the arrows come back and get a goal from Mark Lamb. Well, Steve Jakes makes this happen by driving hard to the net, then Mark Lamb taking a one-timer. Steve Jakes cutting in front of LeGrand. After he does that, he cannot see it. Then Kevin Smith ends up coming back, making a great kick up to his blade, and then end up going Bible. He did that so quick that Frederick Chabot could not get a stick back over between his legs. But again, we talked about the controversial goal. You make the call, Mark Craig on the backhand. Well, you can tell from that for sure that that is a guaranteed goal as that goes into the pocket of the glove. And when the glove is that far behind the goal line, it has to have broken the plane. So, again, a little controversy uh, brewing here from the summit is the Arrows apparently had scored, and that would have been a huge goal after they had just given up one. Uh, the last four minutes of this game saw two goals and nearly saw a third. So the Arrows are going to have to dig down deep and try and overcome this 3-1 deficit. When we return, we will have a look at this stats and we'll be back after this. Solar Bears with a 3-1 lead as we are about ready to start the third period. And let's take a look at tonight's winner in our Watch and Win contest, Alicia Richardson of Bel Air. Congratulations, Alicia. You won a Sportsman Vacation compliments of Southwest Airlines Academy and Ace Travel House. And that Academy package, uh, I hang out at Academy, Adam. I love those stores, all the different sporting stuff, hunting stuff. Everything you can imagine is that Academy. It really is. Come on, really? Yeah. I love it. I, I lo you just go into those stores, you go buy like a dozen golf balls, and you end up being there for two hours just checking out all the stuff that they have. Yeah, I bought a dozen golf balls, got me through the first hole, and that was about it. <laughs> All right, the Solar Bears leading 3-1. They take the puck from within their own end, clear it out at center. Greg trying to sweep it in, and the Solar Bears are back. It's out the center for Joe Frederick, trying to bring it across the line. Here is Sim, but that is offside, and a faceoff brought back to center. Dave Tippett. I'll tell you, uh, I, obviously, I'm, I, I'd be kind of curious to see what he thought if he had a chance to look at the replay. Well, if he looks at the replay, I'm sure he realizes that that puck was in the net and Greg did make a good play. Let's go down to Rob Dobson. Dauber, was that talked about in the locker about the goal or no goal? Well, it was brought up a little bit, Adam. One thing that was mentioned is that we just got an unfortunate break and we have to go and get two goals. We were actually confident. We were a little dis disappointed with the way we played. We know we can go a lot better. And other than that break, we're pretty confident with what we're, what's going to be the result of tonight's game. From, from, your, from your angle, you saw it. I mean, is it a goal in your mind? Well, actually, from here, looking, actually, I'm on the same vantage point as the ref and it's it was tough to tell from here but when you do look at the replay you can see that it did cross the line and it's an unfortunate spot but the referees in the right position just couldn't wasn't able to see it go over thanks Dauber puck is back into the Orlando zone they will scoop it up the boards of the line and Frederick bats it out at center right Besiege tipped it away Mark Gregg brings it in transition across the line gives to May his shot blocked by Neaton and it's cleared out at center ice. Besigio goes back, forecheck by Trevor Sim, and it's controlled by Lamb. He'll dump the puck in. Okay, the last four minutes of that second period was excellent action by both teams, but really the arrows creating a lot of those chances late in that second period. Pat Neaton going back for Orlando in his own zone. He'll move it up the boards, a pass out at center for Bob Joyce, and it's into arrow territory. It's hurled by his back. It came along for Dave Barr. He'll move it in, but they'll blow it dead on an offsides call, and the faceoff will be brought back to center ice. With a minute and a half gone in the third, and the Solar Bears with a 3-1 lead. Dave Barr, the Orlando Solar Bear player assistant coach in his 16th year pro, being 35 years old. I believe he's turning 36 on November 30th. And he has shown no signs of slowing down. Well, he's getting better. I mean, he had his best season as a pro last year, and if it wasn't for the shoulder injury, the way he's playing now, I bet you he's on tap to have an even better year this year. It is Dave Barr out at center. And oh, by the way, he's also an assistant coach to help things out. He's a playing assistant coach. He helps out Kurt Fraser and Peter Horacek on the bench. Horacek, the assistant coach to Kurt Fraser, the bench assistant. And I'm sure Dave Barr helps things out watching tapes. And Kevin Smith in two games against the Arrows has five points, ends up adding another goal. Pretty good stats against the arrows. He's playing on that top line of the bar buffet line, and, and he just has that great shot. 
And then we've talked about how this line last year was the top line in the league. Well, they have not lost nothing losing Craig Fisher, adding a guy like Smith on that line. Mike Hurlbutt's back in his own end. And it's shot over to Darcy Werwanka. He'll chip that one up ice. That will go wider than that. It's icing as Richards gets there, and the faceoff will be brought back into the arrow end. The arrows with, as we mentioned, a tough road trip coming up. They will play Vegas on the road, then play Las Vegas here. Then they leave Tuesday, and they will play at Winnipeg, at Michigan, at Fort Wayne, at Detroit, and then at Kansas City. Five games, nine nights. And it's a little bit of an unusual road trip as when they are in Detroit, they're not staying in Detroit. They're gonna stay at Ann Arbor. They're gonna stay out at the University of Michigan, use their practice facility to take a couple good practice days on the road. You usually never get that. Arrows are gonna have a couple good practice days in Ann Arbor. Mike Hurlbutt with the puck in his own end. And he's pushed along the board. And now it is Darcy Rowenka and Rob Balasevic that takes over. I wonder what Todd Schrock thinks about being the fact we're going to be on the Michigan campus. Him being Ohio State and all that, but practicing at the fine establishment of the University of Michigan. And I don't know, is that the big weekend with Ohio State and Michigan? Well, that's this weekend, which we'll miss. Puck is back down low in the arrow end, swept over to Balasevic, cleared up and out at center, and here comes Bill Bowler. Bowler shoots the puck in. It'll go to LeGrand. He will glove it and hold on. And play whistle down with two and a half elapsed in the third in a 3-1 hockey game. You know, Arrow season tickets aren't the only way to watch the fastest game on ice. Bring your church group, employees, club, softball team, or any squadron of 20 or more for an evening of fast-paced hockey action. Call 627-AERO for more information. That's Houston Arrows Hockey Sports, the way it ought to be. And the Solar Bears, you can already see, they're trying to really slow down the pace, this being their third game in four nights. They know that the Arrows have tons of pride in that locker room and are going to come out with a lot of fire in their eyes. Kurt Frazier, I'm sure, has instructed his players, anytime you can get a whistle, get a whistle. We need time to rejuvenate our legs as they have to be a little bit tired. Lamb with Greg and May. The CG on Jake's defensively. Greg lines up at the left point as Mark Lamb directing some traffic right now hoping to win a face-off back to Greg. Trevor Sim in the circle against Lamb. Wins it back, though, to Greg. Winding, shooting, look, Rand made the save. Well, I don't think Mark Lamb could have diagrammed it any better. And it's pushed down low for Greg. Worked it along the boards. It came back to the line. Jakes trying to center one through skates. It was pushed away by Joyce. Sim loosened it up. It came back to the line. And now it's Lamb behind the cage. He centered one. Greg stuffing for it, but it went wider than that. He tried to push it through Sim. Along the boards, Jakes. He tried to roll it down for Mark Lamb, who's in a battle with Jeff Buchanan. Mark Greg sends. Here's the shot. Great save by Legrand. And it's in front and cleared out at center ice. Oh, a big save as Al May cranked the drive. And it was worked out at center ice. Dave Basigio steers it over to Steve Jakes. He'll drill it into the Orlando zone. Legrand knocked it down. Al May goes in for it. He and Neaton collide to the boards. Trevor Sim has it also tied up in the skates. It's kicked loose for Lamb. Now May trying to move it along the boards as their skate to skate. Conroy just kind of meandering into the slot. Here is Lamb, steers to Conroy, shoots, stopped by Legrand. Puck is in front, but then cleared to Conroy. Centered, it hits skates, puck came back to the line. Jakes tees it up, sends it, May shoots, great save by Legrand, the rebound, and Conroy fired it wide. All the arrows teeing up right now, but can't get it by Legrand again. Some terrific chances, and finally the Solar Bears fall on top of the puck, and we take timeout. Four minutes gone, third period, and the arrows down by two. Orlando leading 3-1, and you might ask yourself, you might say, self, the Arrows with a lot of shots. They've got five. Orlando yet to get one. Here's why. Great work down low by the Arrows. Al May gets a blast away. What even makes it more difficult is Neaton is putting his stick out. Scott Legrand on top of his game. Al Conroy ends up getting a very good chance in front, sweeps it down. Big left pad save by Legrand. Arrows stay with it. Al Conroy gets it back out front. The Arrow player is going to fire it on Legrand. I believe it ends up being Al May that gets another shot away, but pressure all over from the Arrows. Hawkins shot out at center ice. 
And it's rolled into Arrow territory where Wenka goes back. And he's hammered to the corner by Kevin Smith. Battle for the puck along the boards. It's in skates, fished out by Darcy Werwenka. He'll send it along the boards, and here come the arrows. The pass to Conroy. He'll give to Freer, and it's shot into the Orlando zone. Legrand got there to knock it down, but Shuchuk first one there, but he shot it right to Dave Barr, and the Solar Bears will turn it around. Barr scampers to center. He'll bring it across the line. Dropped it for Todd Richards. Cuts it back, but behind Beaufet is Kevin Smith. Takes a shoulder from Hurlbutt. Todd Richards hit along the boards by Freer. It came in front for Barr, but intercepted by Conroy. He read that nicely and moves out at center. Conroy to Freer. Right back. Conroy, it's off his stick. And back down is Chris Miller. Picked up by Beaufet. We'll clear it up and out at center ice, and Basigio is there. Five minutes gone in the third period, and a 3-1 hockey game. Solar Bears lead it. Hockey shot the length of the ice. This will produce an icing call as Basigio goes back and play whistle down. Solar Bears not as scared to ice it in this third period as they're leading 3-1 with 14.47 left to go. Kirk Frazier does not mind that play as his team is showing a little fatigue, or actually a lot of fatigue at the start of this third period. You ask why though, Adam? It's because the forwards in the D are all over the Solar Bears. They're working very hard, and if they keep it up, Kurt Frazier's, he's gonna start growing a few gray hairs because the arrows will start capitalizing. They saw flush side of Scott Legrand. Bill Bowler, Mike Yo. Rob Balasevic with Steve Jakes and Dave Vesigio. Off the faceoff, puck went to the boards. Felsner shouldered by Yo. In there is Bill Bowler. Kicked it down for Yo. Mike Yo trying to cut down. He had it go off a stick, but it came back. Vesigio fakes the shot, cuts in. Here's Vesigio right in. Can't pull the trigger. He had it tipped away, though. Balasevic behind the net. Balasevic trying to move it along. He's watched by Dreger, swept it back down. Ferner is bumped along the boards. Yo loosened it up. Yo cuts to the net, walks in, backhander went just wide. And Felsner will quickly shoot it the length of the ice. Shabbat out of the net. He'll steer it over for Steve Jakes. He runs it over to Basigio, but it was tapped away, and the Solar Bears have it. Carter behind the net. Felsner bumped by Jakes. And here comes Zach Boyer. Boyer, centered one, chipped away by Frederick Shabbat. The arrows are up ice with it. Bill Bowler at his own end. He's out now, and a penalty coming up to Zach Boyer. A delayed call. As now, Carter and Yo get into it. Yo feeling that Carter shot that puck clearly after the whistle. Mike Yo wants to go with Sean Carter, and at this point, maybe that would help fire things up a little bit, but. The arrows also know, and Mike Gill realizing you don't want to get an extra penalty that might cost you power play here. Zach Boyer calling down Bill Bowler at the side. Not a great penalty by Zach Boyer to take it all. Bill Bowler very strong on his feet. Zach Boyer puts his right arm around his right arm and just kind of gives him a little twist. Bill Bowler goes down very hard. You wonder why hockey players need helmets on. Bill Bowler almost hits his head on the bottom of the ice. You know, back in the old days, Adam, they didn't wear those helmets. You can imagine how many times hockey players got hurt by not having helmets on. It looks like Zach Boyer's helmet looks a little big for him, but almost falling over his eyes over there. Face off out at center. Jack Boyer, who came over from the Michigan K-Wings in the offseason. And uh, I think he's another key guy. We talked about Kevin Smith kind of pulling up the slack from Craig Fisher, but Jack Boyer having a terrific year as well. And he was the difference for Michigan in the playoffs that helped carry him as far as they did. Solders have the puck, they'll shoot it back into the arrow end. I had a chance to watch him last night, Adam. He had two goals again last night. He always seems to be around the net. Puck goes into the Orlando zone. That Eaton goes down. Now the puck loosened up. Bowler sends it over to Hurlbutt. Can he get the shot away? No, but here's the tie by. Great glove save made by Legrand. He'll hold on. Now Neaton giving Bill Bowler a little bit of a shove, but the linesmen get in there to separate. What a shot by Mark Lamb getting a great feed from Hurl, but a soft one-timer. He gets all of his muscle into that. But Legrand with the glove in the proper position to make the save. Mark Lamb back out on the point on the power play tonight, getting that one-timer feed from Mike Hurl, but 
Mike Pearl, but made that one time where he didn't make it too hard so that he couldn't get all the wood on it. He just made it at the proper speed so that Mark Lamb could get, get a great shot away. But LeGrand played very, very well so far in this game. Away from the play while uh, Mike Yo and Joe Frederick exchanging verbal spires. And uh, I don't know if those two are done talking, but right now they're on the bench. And the faceoff goes through Hurl Button. It slides back into Arrow territory. Mark Lamb back on the point for this power play with 1.23 remaining in the man advantage for Houston. Bill Bowler steers the puck ahead, dropped it for Lamb, moves it back to center ice for Bowler. Across the line with Greg and Freer. Freer cuts to the net. LeGrand came out of the net, but it came over to Mark Greg. Bounced it back to the line, but he shot it right to Beaufay, and it'll go down the ice. Beaufay and Barr work so well together on the penalty killing unit. They work off of each other. They're always around the puck. Very tough to get control of the puck when those two are on the ice. The Arrows have not scored a power play goal against the Solar Bears this year. They're 0 for 9, but here's Yo with a great chance. Right in this shot, and he hooked it just wide of the net. Frank rolls it along. Hurlbutt pinching, looped it down. Ferner sprawling, and the puck in skates, and it's poked back along, but the referee blowing play dead, and they'll keep the face off in the Orlando zone. 41 seconds left in the Zach Boyer penalty. Ball that I have to go in the third period, a 3-1 Orlando lead. Mike Yo showing some very good moves coming off the wing instead of taking that Bad angle shot, cuts to the middle. Great shot by Mike Yo. Just ends up putting it a little bit wide, but great presence. He's not going to score from there tonight on LeGrand. He wants a better angle, few inches, and that goes in. You know, you look over the last nine games, and, and you might wonder who the best forward or maybe even best overall player for the Arrows has been. It's been Mike Yo. He has done everything. It's not just the goals and the assists, but his, his total goals against when he's on the ice down and his goals for when he's on the ice up. And he's still a little bit bothered by that hip flexor. I talked to him today. He's fighting through it out there tonight. Here's a shot by Basijo upstairs on LeGrand. And LeGrand will hold on to it. Mike Yo in front of LeGrand trying to cause havoc. Dave Basijo known for shooting that puck. Mike Yo knows that if he gets that puck out on the point, he's going to that net. Mike Yo knows his spot on this power play. He's going to that net because there could be a rebound or a deflection for him. Statistician Neil Wilkins unofficially pointing out 38-21. Face-offs in favor of the Arrows, make it 39 as we're rank on the drive. Oh, knocked down by Conroy, but he can't touch it. It's a high stick if he did. So the Solar Bear is able to poke it away, but they can't clear the zone. Besiege are trying to run it down. Held it nicely by Werwank. Good work by the Arrows. It came down low, but the Solar Bears take it away, and they'll shoot it down the ice. And what Solar Bear, Beaufay, once again, him and Barr on the top of the blue line work hand in hand. They're all over the Arrows' defense. Dave Basigio, the pass, missing everybody. It will go down, no icing go. Richards goes back, he's got a free lane to bring it up and out. Richards to center, a rink wide pass to Boyer as he hops out of the penalty box, and it's back down into Arrow territory, but the Solar Bears offsides will bring a face off to center, but first this time out. 11.44 to go in the third, the Arrows trailing 3-1. Eleven forty four to go in this one a three one Orlando lead and Mark Lamb who has the only goal in this game trying to get his team back into it and he's another one of those players that is a player assistant coach he helps out Dave Tippett he leads the club in assists with eleven assists last year though was first in scoring with the team with seventy seven points and he's a playmaker so you're going to see a lot of Mark Lamb this last eleven minutes and forty four seconds as he can dish that puck, and he's, as he's showing tonight, he can shoot that puck as well. Mark Lamb out there with Mark Craig and Al May. Face off controlled by the Solar Bears, and they'll hook it into Arrow territory. Back to play it is Hurlbutt. He'll turn with 11 and a half to go in this one. Lamb tossed it over to Hurlbutt as the Arrows trying to break out with it. It missed. Jakes and it's right back into Arrow territory. And don't look for the Solar Bears to do a lot of forcing. They're into their 1 2 2 4 check. Only one four checker, four men back all time now. Lock is shot up along the boards. Hurl but knocked it down to Lamb. Lamb gives it a dump along the boards. In there is Greg. It's pushed along for Lamb. It came behind the net. Here's Alan May. Waiting, waiting. Looks in front. Center. Jakes was in front. So was Lamb, but it came back to Hurlbutt. Tossed it down for Mark Craig. 
Looks a lot, oh, lost the handle on it. It's right back over to the shoulder. Very in out at center ice. Three on two the other way. Joyce across the line. Give it to Beaufay, or Sim rather, not Beaufay, but it was intercepted. The arrow's in transition. Mark Gregg across the line. Dropped it for Lamb. Steers it back too far, though, for Gregg. Cutting behind the net. Here's Al May. He was run into by Trevor Sim. Lamb battles in the corner. May trying to shoulder the load in there. And here is May cutting in. Gives to Gregg. The shot blocked by Neaton. And the Solar Bears turn it out of harm's way. Greg again turning. Base the left circle. Trying to get through Sim. Rolls it down. Here's Lamb. Looks in front. Centered May. Couldn't get the shot away. And the Solar Bears turn to clear. They couldn't. Held in by the Euro defense. But a second effort picked up by Neaton. And cleared down the ice. 10-11 to play in the third. And icing a call coming up. As Lorenka touches. And the faceoff will come back down into Orlando territory. Dave Tippett giving a lot more ice time to Darcy Warenka now that he has lost Kachera. Warenka is going to be one of those defense that's going to see more ice time. And here's one thing that's unique. In eight, well, 18 games, he has three goals, three assists, six points. But he lives with Mark Gregg. They played together in junior. They played together in Atlanta. They're roommates here in the city. Best of friends. Well. Darcy Warenka. He is a guy that the arrows touched upon at the top of the telecast. One of a handful of guys that they could like to see step up in the absence of Frank Kuchera. And Warenka's played very well tonight. He's had some good scoring chances from the point, and he's played solid defensively. Clock is in the Orlando zone. Dreger trying to move it along for Boyer. It's down the ice and into Arrow territory. Icing is indicated as Basigio gets back there. And they'll bring the faceoff back down into Orlando territory. And a reminder that the Arrows are out in the community and you can stop by the Mason Jar tomorrow and meet Dave Basigio. He'll be on hand to meet and greet the fans. That is tomorrow at the Mason Jar at 6-10. And if you get a chance to go out and meet Dave Basijo tomorrow at the Mason Jar, make sure you order some potato soup. Every once in a while, the Mason Jar caters into the press room at the summit, and they cater in some sandwiches and potato soup. And that potato soup is likely the best potato soup I've ever had. Clock is shot out at center ice, and Zach Boyer will rip it in to Houston Arrow territory. And it's covered up by Frederick Shabbat with 9.44 to go in the third through one Orlando. And you can really get a sense how Orlando is really trying to slow down the pace. And Dave Tippett now has to figure out how he can pick up the pace so that the Arrows can get back to having those very good scoring chances against Scott Legrand. I'm sure he's trying to tell his guys on the bench that when you're playing against that 1-2-2, two, two, the biggest thing is to beat that first guy with speed and then get the puck in and get on the Solar Bears' defenses. They have to be very physically tired as it's their third game in four nights. If the, if the Arrows do get those chances, I'm sure that they could bury a couple here. Clock is rolled down low. Beaufay in there trying to loosen it up. It came to Yo, shouldered by Barr. Werner pinching along the boards. Basigio gives chase. He'll scoop it along the wall over to Rob Balasevic. He couldn't clear it. It's along the line, and finally Yo's got it out at center ice. Mike Yo trying to bring it in. He ran over one of the Solar Bears. And it's taken back by Beaufay. Shoots it over to Kevin Smith. It's back out at center. Nine minutes, 15 seconds to go in this one, and the arrows trailing 3-1. to one. Werner. Off the boards, out at center ice. Rowenka goes back to play. And here is Aaron Boas. Rowenka got through Bill Bowler, and Todd Richards turns it around for the Solar Bears, and he'll dump it in. Chapat out of the net. And Aaron Bow will carry up and out of the zone. Aaron Bow gives it over to Bill Bowler, and then he shot it back into his own end. Mark Freer. He'll get it out at center ice, a lead pass for Al Conroy, and across the line, that's a two-line pass, and they'll bring the faceoff back over to the arrow side of center. 8.40 to go, and a 3-1 Solar lead. Discover the defensive training secrets of America's finest baseball school in an exciting videotape. Baseball World's Defensive Drills Video. Back to 
back AAU national championship teams. The defensive drills video vastly improves players' arm strength, running speed, quickness, agility, and infield and outfield defensive skills. Even coaches practice organization. Lou Pavlovich, Jr., editor of Collegiate Baseball Magazine, calls it a masterpiece, the best defensive drill video ever produced. Many professional players are excited about this videotape. Just ask Atlanta Braves superstar Fred McGriff. This is the instructional video that gets results. Baseball World's Defensive Drills video makes a great gift and benefits players of all ages and ability levels. To order your copy for only $29.95, have your credit card ready and call toll-free. 1-800-423-2121. That's 1-800-423-2121. It really worked for me. Orlando 3, Houston 1, and... Jerry Mines, the head athletic trainer for the Arrows. I'm not going to talk about Jerry tonight. I'm going to talk about his lovely wife, Marjean Mines, who's a teacher out at Lexington Creek Elementary. And she let myself and Guy LaRose come in the other day. And we brought in some of our hockey equipment, talked to the kids, talked to six grade, the grade four, all six classes of the grade four out at Lexington Creek Elementary. And it was quite a treat to do that. They were. Kids were unbelievable, Adam. They had some of the best questions I've heard in a long time. Very attentive out at Lexington Creek. Puck is back out at center ice, and Todd Richards is there. He'll scoop it up for Bob Joyce and into Arrow territory. And back goes Aaron Bow. A pass ahead for Al Conroy, and it's out at center ice. He'll hit the line. Conroy trying to steer one in for Shuchuk. Now it is Al Conroy. Trying to move one down into the corner. That's picked up by Trevor Simmon. He'll move out at center ice. Three on two. But it's blocked nicely by Aaron Bow. And the arrows turn it around. They've got a three on two. Freer, winding, shooting, stopping was Legrand. And he will hold on with under eight minutes to go and a 3 1 shoulder lead. And a lot of times, those shots like that are a lot more difficult for the goaltender as Mark Freer, as he goes to shoot it, the defenseman gets his stick in the way and the puck changes velocity that the goaltender doesn't know exactly where it's going but Kip Cannon trying to get his stick to deflect it up high but the shot still goes on the net and very alertly Scott Legrand covers up Mark Freer trying to get something to go for the arrows just getting a shot on the net 9-2 the shots in favor of the arrows but I don't think Orlando is concerned about theirs they've set up in their trap here and they're just trying to prevent the arrows from getting quality scoring chances right now well they're really playing from the inside out all the shots that the arrows are getting now in the third period are from outside that golden triangle the area where you score most of your goals Face off controlled by Craig, swept away by Boyer. It's knocked down low for Al May, but Buchanan popped it loose. Came right over to Greg, center, Lamb one time shot, hammered just wide. Greg turns one in, Lamb trying to cut in, can't get the shot away. Here's May, the spinorama shot, and that was stuck aside by Legrand. Neaton and Lamb high up along the boards. Mark Greg, base it the right circle. Trying to find Lamb, he and Neaton chop away at it. It's pushed down, Basijo who's pinching, trying to kick it through the boards. And down low for Lamb, that's knocked away by Neaton and cleared out at center, and it got by Jakes. He had to hustle back because he had Boyer on his case. Now the arrow's back in their own end. Steve Jakes with seven minutes to go in the third period. And the arrow's calling by two. Basijo. The pass for Greg. He threw it off skates, and the arrows were off sides. They're going to have to regroup, and Greg will get it right back into the Orlando zone. Buchanan watched by May. He cleared it. Can Hurlbutt get there? Yes, he can. Hurlbutt tees it up, but Felsner got over there. It was deflected. It's out of play. With 6:45 to play in the third period, the Cylinders lead it by a score of three to one. Mike Hurlbut, who missed those nine games with that stress fracture, trying to get a shot off there. One thing that's been very tough for the Arrows tonight is when they get those shots from the point, it always seems like there's a solar bear forward in their face, getting their stick in the way, getting their body in the proper angle. Last game, he had those three points, so with the plus three, so I'm sure Dave Tippett realizes that, and he'll see a lot of ice time here in the Next six minutes, 43 seconds. Puck is in the arrow end. Ferner rolled it down. Now it's Werwenka. He tries to move it up and out of the zone. He's bumped along. And here's Kevin Smith behind the net. Smith and Bowler tie up. They're skate to skate along the boards. 
Smith centered one, but it came right over to Rob Valosevic. He'll skate out with it. Chip the puck ahead, and it's knocked down by Barry Drager. Yo trying to rumble in there. Valosevic digs it out. Nice pass for Bowler. Dropped it back. Hurl, but they miscommunicated, and the Solar Bears are going the other way. Smith across the line, but that is offside, and the faceoff will be brought back to center. Well, a chance with Bill Bowler and Mike Hurl, but this is a miscommunication and a scoring chance goes awry, and the Arrows will have to settle for a faceoff outside their own end. Kurt Frazier, I'm sure, was happy to see that because if Mike Hurlbut stays back for that drop pass from Bill Bowler, he likely has a free lane to go in on Scott Legrand. You talk to a lot of players that have played for Kurt Frazier. I had a short stint, a 14 game stint when he coached in Milwaukee. I was sent down from Vancouver. He was an assistant coach, and you could tell back then, Adam, that he had the qualities in the making of a great head coach. Mark Lamb through the neutral zone. Brings it across the line, had his pocket picked. And Jakes will shoot it back into the Orlando zone. Matt Neaton taken to the boards by Alan May. And it's cleared by Orlando out at center ice. Todd Richards through the neutral zone. He'll just dump it in. Shabbat out of the net to slow. A bouncing puck that he had a little trouble corralling. He shot it right to Trevor Sim. It went to the corner. Joyce looped it down. Here's Frederick, the stuff shot going wide of the net. Richards moving down. Tossed it behind the net for Bob Joyce. He's bumped along the boards by Steve Jakes. In there's Trevor Sim. Puck is lobbed down. It came back to the line. It's out at center ice. 5.15 to go, and the Arrows need a couple. Trailing 3-1, to Vesigio hammers that out at center, and here come the Arrows through the neutral zone. Lamb across the line. Lamb trying to get around uh, Chris Miller. Lamb comes in front, he centered it, but nobody there. Hurlbut pinching now, gives it right back to Lamb, steers it, Craig the shot, Matt Fand on it. Al Bofay trying to clear, here's Al May. This has been the best line of the night for the Arrows. More, more importantly, especially in this third, here's Aaron Bow trying to center one, and Legrand quickly pounces on it. He will cover up and hold on. With 4.48 to go in the third, and the Solar Bears with a 3-1 lead. We'll be back. 3-1, the Orlando Solar Bears lead it, and what a hockey game Mark Bofay is having tonight. Not getting any goals, but doing the things he does best. And last year, he was the MVP, which myself, I, I kind of question a little bit, but after watching him play again this year, I thought Dave Barr could have been their MVP, but with 109 points, how can you qualm on that on Buffet? Not one bit. It's Buchanan off the faceoff. He will gather the puck and move it up out at center for Kevin Smith. And it's right back into Arrow territory. I don't know what the crowd is applauding here. What is going on? Puck came behind the net. And Ruenka fights for it with Kevin Smith. Conroy in a battle. And it's right over to Mike Hurlbut. His lead pass off the stick of Freer. It'll go down on the ice. This will be an icing call as Neaton goes back. And they'll bring the faceoff back uh, into the arrows end. And I'll tell you what, Troy Gamble, you touched upon the start of the game thinking that, that Orlando might tire out this being their third game in four nights. And I think Kurt Fraser is sending a message not just to his team but to you, Troy. Hey, we're not tired. They're, they're playing a very strong third period. They're playing their game. They're playing a smart period is what they're doing is that they're taking whistles whenever they feel that they have problems out on the ice. They have guys like Dave Barr that know, I'm not just going to give it up in the middle. I'll ice it down, regroup, and it gives them time to get their air and go back out. And they're just playing a very smart third period. Mark Freer, the corner, bumped along the boards by Kevin Smith. And it's loosened up by Dave Barr. Scooped it down for Smith, who lost an edge, but stayed tough with the puck. Gives to Barr, centered, Buffet the shot, and that was just over and wide of the net. Barr, tied up by Freer, gives to Beaufay, base of the right circle, right back for Barr, trying to cut in. Barr turning, he's got a lane right in on goal, but he was shouldered off by Freer. And covering up is Shabbat. Now Conroy drops the gloves and goes right after one of the Solar Bear. I think Conroy took exception that whoever that Solar Bear was took an extra poke at Frederick Shabbat. And then I believe he took an extra poke at Al Conroy, so Al Conroy ends up taking a poke at him. It's going to be very interesting to see what the calls come out of this. Dave Tippett would love to see his power play go back out there and hopefully break their jinx against the Solar Bears. Well, the cooler heads have prevailed here, but I think that 
some penalties due. And let's see, Kevin Smith being escorted to the penalty box, as will Con Al Conroy. And let's see what the calls might be. I think we have a look at this and watch what happens in front of Frederick Shabbat. Well, he goes down to cover up the loose puck and there was an extra whack there. So Al Conroy whacks and oh. just a little, a couple little slashes there. Al Conroy wanting to get in with Smith. He had the gloves off ready to rock and roll. Well, let's send it down to Rob Dobson. Dobber, even though it's a 3-1 hockey and this hockey team has been battling all through this third period. Well, I, I know we have it and it's unfortunate we haven't got more goals because we've been going in the net well, we've been shooting the puck at the at, at, at Grand well and you know, there's been a couple plays where we had chances to score and just missed on the shot and uh, you know, we've had our opportunities to score and just been a, haven't been able to light the lamp. All right, well, we appreciate it, Dobber. Two minutes up each to Al Conroy and Kevin Smith, and that takes us to uh, our Gatorade play of the game, and no question about this one, it could have made it 3-2 with Mark Gregg's backhander that was clearly a goal, but they said no goal. Mark Gregg makes a very good backhand here. He's off balance, he has good velocity on it. Should have been a goal. Great presence of mind by Legrand, but it doesn't matter. That has to be whistled to goal. Now the arrows. Go four on four for a couple of minutes. Here is Hurlbutt to shoot the puck in. That's right out in front. Drager tied up by Lamb. They go hard to the corner. Mark Gregg in there. Here is Sean Carter into the corner, and that's loosened up by Gregg. Popped it back along the boards for Darcy Werwanka. Gregg hands it right back to Werwanka. Here is Gregg trying to cut down the right side, and it sends into the corner, and Werwanka is there. Ferner. He's tied up by Lamb. In there is Mark Gregg. As it's four on four for another minute 18. Hurlbutt, left side. He's got Lamb in front of the shot. Stopped by Legrand. Nice save there. Hurlbutt hit along the boards by Perry Drager. Puck is in skates. Lamb trying to fish it out. Good hit by Gregg to loosen up the puck. Here's Hurlbutt a drive. Blocker save made by Legrand. Mark Lamb back to the line. Here's Hurlbutt. Tees it up, but then sends it over to Mark uh, or Darcy Werwenka. Lamb in a battle with Sean Carter, and the shoulders come away with it with 50 seconds left in this four on four. They'll shoot the puck down, and the arrows go back. This is an icing call because we're at even strength, and they'll bring the face off back down into the Orlando zone. Two and a half to go, and the arrows just down by a couple. And the arrows had three shots on goal, but all three shots came from the outside. The best being Hurl, but shooting it with Mark Lamb in front. Mark Lamb trying to get a deflection. The only problem is, is that when you try to deflect the puck, if you're too close to the goaltender, as Scott Legrand had come out of the net very wisely, it's very tough to tip it past him. Mike Hurl, but shooting the puck once again, blasting it onto the net just a good snapshot there's mark lamb trying to get that deflection it's just very tough to do as legrand is in very good position and that is our high low highlight of the night brought to you by high low auto supply what you need is high low puck is out at center ice for bill bowler and aaron bow's got it and the arrows need the orlando solar bears to score low and them to score high one night well it has not happened that way in the previous 12 meetings and Right now, the arrow's down by two, but with some time. 2.10 left, though. Bowler cutting in, centered. Basigio moving right in. He centered. Legrand got a piece of it. Puck bounds to the corner, and it's rolled away by Boyer and right back down the ice. Arrows with tons of pressure in front of the net as Buffet had broken his stick. Did not have a stick to clear the puck. Now a chance for Valasevic. Trying to move in, he centered it, but it was right to Joe Frederick. It's cleared out at center. Teams are back at five aside as Smith and Conroy back out. And here's a breakaway. Frederick's in alone. Deke shoots Shabbat to save, and he'll hold on. Oh, a nice save by Frederick Shabbat on Joe Frederick, and he at least keeps the respirator running for the arrows there. That goal could have cost him. Frederick all alone in on Frederick Shabbat, but trying to shoot the puck very tough as Frederick Shabbat, the one thing he does great on breakaways, he's in very good position, tries to go to his left 
then to his right on his forehand, but he cannot fake Frederick Shabbat out by trying to fake him side to side. Fred, Freddie's just in great position, and as he shoots it, he just drops down into that butterfly style, eats up the puck in those coho pads of his. Face off in the circle to the left side of Frederick Shabbat. And while we've got a minute, I want to remind everybody the Arrows next action. Uh, they'll be on the road in Las Vegas Friday night from the Thomas and Mack Center. Game time is at 9 o'clock, and the Arrows Dave Tippett has called for his 30-second timeout, and he will talk things over. Well, I'm sure he's discussing with his team when they're going to pull Frederick Shabbat, or if they are, with a minute and 37 seconds left. Dave Tippett, always the optimist, always a positive guy on the bench. You never see too much emotion of him. He does not like his players to take a lot of frustration out on referees or linesmen. He wants them to stay focused on the job in hand, which is winning hockey games and tonight scoring on Scott Legrand. 137 left in the third period. The Solar Bears three, the Arrows one, and with it being five on five, Dave Tippett will go with Mark Craig, Mark Lamb, Bill Bowler, Mike Hurlbutt, Darcy Rowenka. Key face off here, if the Arrows can get it out of their zone and into Orlando territory, I'm sure Frederick Shabbat will make his way to the bench. And Kurt Fraser with one foot on the dasher board. Pretty animated right now as far as directing where he wants people to go for this face-off. Every game he has a foot up on a dasher board, a Gatorade cooler, up on a dasher board. A little pedal, a little pedal or something for him. All right, face-off to the left side of Frederick Shabbat. Sim against Lamb, drop of the puck. Lamb wins it. It comes to Rowenka. He'll head behind the net. Rowenka had it. Poke check by Joyce. Big play there by Bob Joyce, but it's controlled by Greg, and the arrows are out at center. We'll keep an eye on Shabbat. Bill Bowler across the line. He'll dump it in. Shabbat comes to the bench. The grand will cover up, and play is whistled down. So a, a smart play there. They dump it in. They force the grand to hold on, and now the arrows with a faceoff can set up their six-on-five attack. Scott Legrand, though, was shaking his head a little bit. He was hoping that he could keep that puck going in play, but he decided that he better cover it up. He gave his heads a couple little shakes and was hoping that maybe he could have gave it to a defenseman. Time to look at our technical star of the game, brought to you by Texaco, and there he is, Mark Beaufay, with two assists tonight. Four points on the year against the Arrows, and he is your Texaco star of the game as he sets up Kevin Smith's goal. Well, he made a great play by keeping it in on an arrow turnover and then feeding Smith, who did all the rest, soccer style, kicking it up to his forehand and going five-hole on Frederick Shabbat. Mark Lamb, Bill Bowler, Gary Shuchuk, Mark Gregg with Darcy Rowenka and Mike Hurlbutt. Face off, right side of Legrand. Face off controlled by the arrow. Shuchuk turning left side, dumped the puck along the boards. In there, Bob Joyce, he's hammered along the wall. Arrows Hurlbutt held it in, then he fell, but it was poked down deep. Buchanan trying to clear, and it's poked down at center ice. Mark Craig is back. He'll move out at center with under a minute to go. Gary Shuchuk, the lead pass. Hurlbutt goes into the Orlando zone. Neaton is there. Neaton harassed on the play, and he threw it right off Mark Craig. Craig turning, trying to roll it down. Neaton with a hit along the boards to Craig. Now Lamb, and we've got a whistle and a hand pass. Whistled on the arrows, and that will bring a face off out at center ice. Mark Lamb getting a hand pass from Mark Gregg. Dave Tippett, who, what do you say? You know, 44 seconds left to go. They're down by two. A very tough team. And the one thing in the opening, we said that the arrows needed to come out of the first period with a lead because the Solar Bears, when they lead after the first period, everyone knows that they're 9-1. and one. Very tough to beat. When they lead after the second period, they're 10-1. and one. They just play so well defensively. You need to get out of that first period without getting scathed at all. And the arrows ended up being down by one. And fighting an uphill battle. Orlando's won 10 in a row and are 42 seconds away, if the score remains the same, of going 11 in a row. And by far the best streak in the IHL. Pearl but has to regroup at center ice as the Arrows have the empty net, but the puck is knocked away. Empty net shot goes wide. 
And back to play it is Hurl, but that is an icing call, and the faceoff will come back into the Orlando zone with 22 seconds to play and a 3-1 Orlando lead. I believe that was Barry Dreger who fired it all the way down the ice. Barry Dreger not known for his goal proudness whatsoever, thinking, well, I don't see a goalie in there. Why don't I fire it all the way down and see if I can get it in the empty net? Mike Hurlbut going back to touch it to get the whistle back down in the solar bear end. Face off will be to the left side of Scott Legrand and Dave Tippett will go with the same six that he has had. Again, the net empty to our right. Frederick Shabbat on the bench. And what does Dave Tippett have on, on his sleeve as he's got Shuchuk to take the face off against Mark Fay And Shuchuk wins it cleanly back. Here's Hurlbutt, lets the shot go. Stop by Legrand, puck in front, the shot, score! He was all alone in front to poke it past Legrand, and with 18 seconds left, very much some life left, but not a lot of time. And Lamb's got his second of the night. Lamb jumps on the loose rebound by a shot from Hurl, but Dave Tippett drew up that face off to get to Mike Hurl, but he just wants to get it on the net. He does do that. Legrand tries to kick it far out, but ends up getting it to Mark Lamb, who fires it far side past Scott Legrand. And before that, Adam, I did not want to say anything about this, but Legrand was kind of looking around like he wanted to get the puck and fire it all the way down, maybe hoping to get a goal. Maybe he lost his concentration and the arrows jumped on it. Well, some time, but they've got to work quickly. 13 seconds left. Ferner hammered by Shuchuk. It's Joyce, though. He'll shoot it down the ice, and that will do it for the hockey game unless the arrows can get there. Hurl, but it's back. He will touch with two seconds left. And an icing call. That is enough time to win a face-off cleanly back and get a shot away. And I don't think it's going to be too hard to figure it out here. I'm sure Dave Tippett says, let's line up a guy like Pearl, but and see if maybe he can get a clean shot away. Sometimes with only this amount of time left, is that will instruct the centerman to go forward with it. And it looks like Gary Shuchuk might take the draw. So if he does, he'll be looking to go forward with it, not winning it cleanly back to Hurl, but he has two options. He wants to keep the Solar Bear centerman guessing. He wants to either go forward or back to Hurl, but. Face off to the left side of Scott Legrand. Let me just throw this in the back of your mind. How big is that no goal? Off the face off, poked away by the Solar Bears, and that's the hockey game. That's the end of the game. So the Orlando Solar Bears go on to win by a score of three to two, and all of a sudden that uh, no goal call uh, proves very big. Well, it, it's huge. At the time, it was huge, but now after you see the score, after 60 minutes of a, a hockey game, it's 3-2. They include that goal. We're in a shootout. We're not, the Arrows do not lose this game. They at least get one point, and at home, usually you win your shootout, so they could have came out here with two points if they would have called that a goal. Well, let's show our fans in case you missed it or even if you have seen it one more time Scott Legrand who had a big game and obviously very big because he was rewarded with a little bit of luck right here and Greg makes a great backhand shot here he's off balance he makes sure that he gets it up over the sprawl defenseman Legrand reaching back into the net pulls it out that is a goal the goal light does not go on the referee does not signal a goal and that hurts maybe there is a little orlando magic with these solar bears well there has to be something you cannot go that that far uh, in a, a season and a half and still not beat one team there has to be a little bit of magic with this Solar Bear team. All right, the Solar Bears win it by a score of three to two, and we will have final thoughts when we return. so low you have the freedom to go places by your participating Texas Chrysler Plymouth Dodge and Jeep and Eagle dealers by Columbia Healthcare Corporation healthcare has never worked like this before 
by Texaco Clean System 3 gasoline. Add more life to your car, take it to the star. By Hilo Auto Supply. For the lowest prices every day, what you need is Hilo. And by the Gatorade Company. You live life, you get thirsty. Life's a sport, drink it up. Final from the summit tonight, the Orlando Solar Bears win their 13th straight against the Houston Arrows by a score of 3-2. to two. But the difference here was I think the Arrows definitely sent a message to the Orlando Solar Bears and uh, played with them pretty tough. But again, it seemed like the story was they ran into some decent goaltending. Scott LeGrand, I'm not saying Scott LeGrand was the difference. He wasn't, but uh, he had some help. He had some luck. Played well, but the Arrows, again, just couldn't get anything by him tonight. Well, I think you look at the defense of the Orlando Solar Bears just played so well. They played so tough in front of the net, and it was just tough for the Arrows forwards to get those good quality shots on Scott LeGrand that you need to win hockey games. So the Arrows now uh, look ahead to the Las Vegas Thunder, and really it is a key stretch for them because they've got back-to-back -back games with Las Vegas. And then we touched upon the five-game road trip in nine days. And, and although you're, you're dealing with some teams that haven't fared that well, you're on the road for a long time. And uh, the Arrows right now have got to get ready for a key stretch of their season. Well, I, I think you say when you say key is that the Las Vegas sets the tempo for the road trip. They have to play Las Vegas very tough. They have to go out to Las Vegas, show no respect to Las Vegas Thunder, then come home, play them tough again. And then, as you say, get on that road trip. Those teams have struggled up north. Manitoba has not played as well as uh, they wanted to. Kalamazoo has not played as well. Detroit's a very good team. But then they have those couple off days on the road. And I think Dave Tippett will look at those off days on the road in Ann Arbor and try to get this team as close as he can and then go into Kansas City and have a huge effort. Well, the Euros got just the one goal in the third period, but it was a, a nice one at the as time was running out. Mark Lamb gets his second of the night. Well, it starts with Mike Hurl, but it even starts before that, though, because Hurl, but went over to the bench, Dave Tippett, told him where he wanted him. Mark Lamb gets the good goal, but it starts right from the coaching of Dave Tippett. And how good really was that Mark Lamb, Mark Greg and Al Mayline, especially in that third period? Well, they had a lot of hustle all night, and I think that's what Mark Lamb really wants to see. On his line, he wants to get the puck in deep. He's a playmaker. Guys like Al May and Greg who can skate, who can be physical, he feels that he can set them up and he can get back to those point totals he had last year. All right, when we return, we'll take a look at the final stats. The final tonight, 3-2, the Solar Bears win it. Final from the summit, the Orlando Solar Bears defeat the Houston Arrows 3-2. And the Arrows now still trying to find that first elusive win against the Solar Bears, but they made some strides tonight. Well, the, the forwards made a lot of strides. I thought is that they were physical on the D, which Dave Tippett won, and he wanted the forwards to punish the D. They did that tonight. They got in front. They just could not score. Another good goaltending effort from Scott Legrand. Take a look at the final stats and the Arrows outshoot the Solar Bears 34-24. They own the faceoff circle 45-31. to Arrows 0 for 3 on the power play. Solar Bears 1 for 3 and although these stats aren't uh, like we've seen in the past where the Arrows overwhelm the other team again. The, the key stats, the faceoff, shots on goal. Those stats again kind of prove in the Arrows favor but it's that first one. Goals. 3-2. Well, it is the goals, but the other one that I really look at in that stat category is that power play goal. It was on the first power play of Orlando, and I think that kind of sent a little bit of a tempo to that first period and made it tough for the Arrows the rest of the night as Orlando, when they score that first goal, they're 9-1. How good? I, even though the Arrows, again, lose tonight, how good will that matchup be Friday night in Las Vegas? Well, that, that is going to be about Friday night in Las Vegas. Always when this Arrow team and the Thunder team get together, there's a lot of stuff going on. There's goals, there's grappling, there's a lot of good body contact. No, no grappling. Come on. A little bit of grappling. Anytime you got to go against a McSorley team, you're going to have grappling. Oh, and I thought you were kidding. No, no, no. <laughs> but it, the, the thing about that whole entire series is going to be the Arrows having good discipline. They had good discipline tonight. If they continue that against an undisciplined Thunder team, they're going to have a lot of success. Yeah, and, and they'll need it. It's a big weekend series against the Las Vegas Thunder after the game, which, by the way, can only be heard on radio on 106.9 FM KKHT. That's a 9 o'clock face-off. Then the Arrows are back home 
home here at the Summit to take on the Las Vegas Thunder, a game that you can also see right here on Fox Sports Southwest. Then it's the five-game road trip. And, and again, I, I want to reiterate your, your thoughts about being on the road. I think that could be exactly what the Euros need, maybe to bring this team together a little bit. And I'm going to miss some of the games on the road, so I'm not missing too much going north up to Winnipeg, and I'm going to miss the Manitoba part of it. So all I can say to you, Adam, is dress warm. Make sure you have your mittens on. Portage in Maine, is that the street? Portage in Maine is the coldest spot in the world, I believe. <laughs> now, I know it's the coldest spot in Canada. The wind just howls down the road. So I want you to go there, buy taxi cab, jump out of your cab, jump out of your cab, and watch your face just freeze instantly. Troy, thanks very much for your help. Thanks a lot. All right, the Solar Bears win it by a score of 3-2. to two. Don't forget the Earls are back in action again Friday night in Las Vegas. They take on the Thunder at 9 o'clock. And our next Fox Sports Southwest game will be Sunday afternoon at 4 for the rematch between the Arrows and the Thunder. Once again, tonight's final score, the Orlando Solar Bears 3, Houston Arrows 2. For Troy Gamble, this is Adam Gordon saying goodnight from the Summit.